What the heck is going on, Kind of Funny Best Friends? Welcome back to another Kind of Funny Games afternoon stream. It's your guys, Snowbike Mike, and yes, I'm safe, I'm sound, I'm hanging with the gang here in beautiful, sunny San Francisco. So thank you for your positive energy, your thoughts, your love, as me and Tahoe fully evacuated and got safe out of the fire. But we got a lot of fun things to focus on. We got a lot of good out in the world that we got to bring energy to and put our focus on. And today, it's the finale of Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty. That's right, Barrett Courtney is tearing through all of the Metal Gear series with me. It's our first time ever playing it. It's our first time ever experiencing it. And we're at the end of another incredible story. And it wouldn't be fun without of our two, actually technically three if he's still here, awesome best friends who are Metal Gear experts. We have Blessing out of Yoye Jr. We have Kevin Coelho and Fox himself, my guy, Tam. Uh, I'll start with you, Tam. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. I just came hot off posting Kind of Funny Games Daily for the first time, so I'm feeling pumped and I'm ready for some Metal Gear Solid 2 action. You know what, Tam? There was some good synergy between you and Gary. I could feel it, right? You guys were <laughs> telling stories, going back to the old school, talking about life across the pond, and it was a ton of fun. You absolutely crushed hosting Kind of Funny Games Thank Daily. You. It's a great job, Tam. And uh, of course, if you're watching on BOD, you can go catch that on podcast services and over on youtube.com slash kind of funny games. Tam and Gary, a great combo that you don't want to miss. Talking about some Batman news that uh, maybe you want to keep an eye on because I know one guy who loves Batman and that's my dude, Barrett Courtney. Barrett, how are you today? I'm ready to, I'm ready to finish this game, Mikey. I'm ready to see what all the kids are talking about when it comes to the series. I know Metal Gear Solid 2 is a fan favorite. I know two and three are, uh, beloved um and after going through one it was a, it was a fun time i started to get why people uh love and are enamored by this universe um but i, I feel like we still have barely scratched the surface of what this universe can uh, can deliver so um i'm excited to experience the end uh with you today i've got lulu uh chilling underneath my desk right now which uh always brings a, a smile to my face and i'm happy you're doing well mike Thank you, Baird. I appreciate the love and the energy. Uh, rounding out our squad, we have my guy, Blessing out of Oye Jr. Blessing, a new episode of The Blessing Show coming up on Thursday. I'm very excited about it. You've been playing Genshin Impact. Let's talk about those two things. Have you busted open your wallet yet for Genshin Impact? And can you give me a tease for The Blessing Show? I have not busted open my wallet for Genshin Impact. I will Good. say that I booted, I booted up Genshin this morning and I thought about it because I was looking at my intertwined fates and my acquaint fates. Those are two two currencies that you use to buy packs in that game. I was looking at those and I was like, hmm, those are running a little low. I could use a little bit more of those because like today is my last day if I want to try to unlock Yoimiya or if I wanted to try to un unlock Zinyan. Uh, but I hear that the next event card for Genshin is going to be a banger. And so I'm, I think I'm going to save the cash. I think I'm going to save the cash until I get into the next event but uh that's where i'm at with it right now regarding the blessing show very excited for the for thursday's episode i got no tease other than to say that it, it is a big episode that people should look forward to it's a very big episode um you know i i i just got done watching the final cut for it because roger sent it through this morning and it's a banger like that's all i can say is like people, people are gonna be really excited about this episode uh very much looking forward to it uh and also speaking of stuff that's been going up this week ps love you xoxo is also up that went up this morning that is our far cry 6 preview uh greg miller got to check it out janet garcia also got to check it out they both played around four hours and they talked all about it extensively uh, uh i answered so many of my questions about far cry 6 and what it does better than far cry 4 and far cry 5 uh they they actually converted me into actually being excited for far cry and so like if that's not enough to get you hyped for listening to that episode i don't know what is uh and then after that me and janet had a really good conversation about the big naughty dog interview that went down over on game performer there was a lot to dive into there and so it's a it's a long longer jam-packed ps i love you xoxo episode but everybody should go check it out because i think it's an excellent one as well and also i want to give a shout out to more hussein for uh doing kfgd because i love hearing to more come off that kfgd energy because i know it all too well where you're coming <laughs> off and it's like cool i can take on the world i am fully awake right now and i heard that in tomorrow's voice ready. so I'm ready to solve all the world's problems. Hell yeah. <laughs> you guys are the absolute best. Thank you for the tease, bless. And of course, yes, PS I love you, XOXO. Let's get pumped up for Far Cry and see where this is gonna take us. But there's also one more member of our squad 
We have Kevin Coelho in the building. And if you can see right over my shoulder, I don't know if the show is showing it, but uh, Kevin's actually been turned into a robot right now. Kevin, can you give me a little wave? Oh, there it is. <laughs> yes. Uh, as many of you know, if you've listened to Kind of Funny Games daily, and if you don't know, I'll tell you right now, we have some really awesome sponsored content coming up on Thursday. That is September 2nd. We will be celebrating the launch of Surgeon Simulator 2. And uh-oh, Kevin's got four robot arms. Kevin or Tim and Joy are gonna be hanging two. out. Me and Kevin are gonna be having some fun with Surgeon Simulator 2. Kevin's gonna be causing some havoc with me while I play the game with these robot arms. Will he feed me a gummy bear? Will he brush my teeth with the robot arm? Will he try to distract me as I save our patient on the table? You'll have to tune into Thursday to find out, but some really fun content coming your way. Surgeon Simulator 2, robot arms, me, Kevin, Tim, Joey. It's gonna be a blast. Make sure you're here. That is during our normal Kind of Funny Games afternoon stream, twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games. And of course, on our YouTube channel, if you haven't gone over there, y'all have been killing it lately. Please, let's continue to push towards 20,000 subs. We're at 18 and a half right now. YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Plays, our home for all of our Twitch archives. That's where you can find the VOD. That's where you can find all of the fun. And uh, Surgeon Simulator 2 this Thursday, you won't want to miss out on the shenanigans that will be Kevin and these robot arms. It's going to be a really great time. Then on top of that, we got to talk about tomorrow. Don't forget tomorrow, September 1st, we will be participating in a day off of Twitch to stand with other streamers all around the globe right now to raise awareness and bring a conversation and a moment to really talk, to learn, to understand about what's going on here on the Twitch platform to ensure everybody around the globe is having fun in a safe environment to stream and watch streams. There's a lot of hate going on in this platform for marginalized streamers of any walk of life and it's just unacceptable. And that's why we here at Kind of Funny will be taking a moment with all of them to acknowledge that, to listen, to understand, and also try to bring some awareness to Twitch and others around the platform. So we will be taking a day off of Twitch tomorrow. Whether you're watching, whether you're streaming, please just think about it. That's what these are all about, is for you to take a moment to think about it, to listen, to understand, and you can develop your own you know, ideas and voice from there. But uh, we will be participating in that, so please be mindful of that tomorrow. Uh, final note, I'm here. Thank you to everybody that has messaged me, everybody that has checked in. I am safe, we are good. Thank you to my friends and family that kept me updated throughout the evacuation process. We were prepared late last night uh, or Sunday night into Monday. Me, the dogs, all of my belongings that truly meant the world to me are currently safe down here in San Francisco. The world is crazy right now. A lot of natural disasters are happening around the globe. So make sure to send some thoughts, some good well wishes, and make sure to call somebody. If you know them and they're dealing with a fire, a hurricane, whatever it may be, there's a lot of craziness happening and you always wanna make sure you check in. It's truly and honestly an eye-opening and moving experience to be a part of something like that. You really don't know until you're part of it. And it is one of those where Keeping tabs on all of your friends is probably the biggest and most important thing. I had a friend, he doesn't have a car, he has no way to get off the hill. And, uh, you know, thankfully his family was able to drive a number of hours to come get him or else I was going to have to go pick him up and it was a crazy time. But thank you to everybody for checking in. We're safe, we're sound, we're hoping that the house doesn't get burned down. We're hoping the town doesn't get burned down because as many of you know, Tahoe is very important to me and uh, it is the gem of the Sierra Nevada mountain range and unfortunately this wildfire is uncontrollable right now. But all that matters is we're safe and that's all that matters. But. Let's have some fun. Let's focus on the good stuff here on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games. It's the end of Metal Gear Solid 2, Sons of Liberty. Liquidus Snake is running amok right now. We got Metal Gear Arsenal about to take flight and possibly take over the world through a crazy program that we thought EE, -E, e -E, Emily, <laughs> Emma could take care of, but guess what? She's dead now, y'all. And we had to have a bro moment with our guy, Snake and Octagon. And now we're off, ready to set the stretch the record straight and stop this thing. We got Snake fighting Fortune down below, which I'll tell you right one thing right now, Tam. I better see that fight or we better take place in that fight. Cause if we don't get to see Fortune do something, I'm gonna be very disappointed because yeah. she's an awesome character and a badass. She's been teased way too much for it to not mm -hmm. be a moment. You're, you know, Mike? 
Uh, that's Maybe. how I feel, bless. Oh, right, bear. What? That's how I feel. What, what if they fall in love down there? Whoa. You know what I love looms on the battlefield. They're just banging. <laughs> you, you know no, what, say, what happened? Fortune favors the bold, and Snake is the boldest. <laughs> Blessing, I, I don't like how similar you are to Nick, where, like, we took it to a step, and that's all we needed to do, and then you ha just had to take it to the next step, and it was very like, unnecessary. Think about it there, right? There's, like, no beds down there. They're on the floor just going at it, you know? And Raiden, oh, has, just Raiden has to walk around in, everywhere. just sliding around. I mean, Snake knows how to flirt. Snake flirts with every single uh, female character he comes the across. The amount of crawling that guy has done. Floors, guys. Like, he's they, done they, so much slithering. Oh, he's gonna, he's gonna be great. He's raw. You can't let those double cheeked up <laughs> go to waste. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like, look at that. And this is the example. Oh, when Tim was talking oh, about man. on the kind of funny look podcast about like how snake. unexpected everybody would be with like the shit that Bless says, this is an example. This is an example of the wild shit that I've comes out of Bless. Here it is. Here it is. Guys. Picture, picture him standing behind Fortune. He takes a look and then just goes, behind D. <laughs> <laughs> So we have that situation going on downstairs. Then upstairs, we have our guy Raiden going up against Liquidus Snake in some sort of freaky deaky mind game VR mission. We have no idea what's happening. That's why we're here right now. The finale, it's going down. We got a whole lot to handle. We got a lot of fun to do. Don't forget that you can fill up our daily gold bar. Remember, if you want us to stream for an extra hour today, go for the three hours. We can fill up that bar with your support for follows, gifts and subs, bit donations, subscribing at the tier one through three level. Or remember, if you, your mama, your daddy, your auntie, your uncle, your dog walker, your dentist, or anybody you know have Amazon Prime, you got Twitch Prime. And Prime Gaming gets you two awesome things. One, one free sub to any broadcaster here on Twitch each and every 30 days. Make sure to use that sub because it doesn't auto renew. Take that money from Amazon and give it to the people you love because it's a really awesome thing. And then two, really what I'm trying to stress to y'all is Amazon and Twitch are tag teaming up to give you free stuff each and every month. You see a big push right now. They're going to send you a bunch of free PC games over with Prime Gaming. So if you have that, you're going to get a bunch of free games and who doesn't love free video games, y'all? So make sure to use those subs. Help Help us fill up that bar one last time to end the month. Don't forget about our monthly goals. Nick and Andy are going to take the SATs. Myself and Blessing are going to host a fighting game tournament. That will all be happening next month. And then uh, next month goals. I mean, you know what's happening after next month. It's October. And oh, that means we're baby. gonna have some spooky, scary goals throughout the month of September to prepare for October. So let's have some fun. Let's fill up that bar one more time. And Barrett. Take us away. Let's jump into the gameplay. All right. The one thing you uh, you uh, forgot to mention, Mike, is that we have a dope ass sword too. We oh, bladed it up, we bro. We, we do it have up. a dope ass sword, y'all. Yeah, and so uh, yeah, we we left off on top of this like matrix looking platform. Uh, Solid as Snake is like doing the whole like bad guy kind of monologue thing right now, and like that's right where we left off. We went through the whole like uh, what was it the the fish and mailed. Uh, segment uh, where we're fighting a bunch of dudes and like it would it would go to the game over screen but I was still playing it was fucking wild the um, the system is breaking Mike the system is breaking and it's everything is bugged uh, Colonel it, uh, Campbell is freaking me the hell out I knew to never trust that dude even from the first game um, and now let's see where it's got us you know you know what I'm saying, Mike? Also, I'm uh, maybe uh, filling a little bit of time because my dog walker also just told me that she's going to be here in a little bit. So, okay, okay. I mean, how we can jump in, we can jump in and pause and stuff. We'll talk if yeah. you'd like. I can talk for five minutes. No, we got it. We down. got it. We, okay. We've made the kids wait enough. We're like 15 minutes in. Okay. All that good People stuff. Ready? Let's um, do it. Alrighty. Slowed game. Bear, of... where's your dog from? Puerto Rico. Hmm. No way. Really? Yep. She's a rescue oh, from Puerto wow, Rico. Yeah, because I know Kevin, you had uh, seen like a almost like a, a twin of Lulu. I, identical. The picture isn't great that I sent you, but like yeah, yeah. And you said so that they were from, they were from Mexico, and I was like, Mexico, yeah, uh, Mexico. yeah, yeah. But uh, uh, yeah, Lulu came up with like all of her siblings too. Hold up, is there a pause button, Barrett? You sure you want to start Ooh. this? Is there a pause button? Yeah, there we go. Boom, okay, right there. We're good. Okay, as long as you can pause it, let's do yeah. it. Someone says you can't pause. I mean, I just did. Just proved you wrong right there. <laughs> oh, Fuck off. Shit. You don't know what you're Proved talking you about. Wrong, Cinematic gaming media. Get timed, time 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 time. Get timed out. Get timed out. 
Word? Yeah. Cinematic Media Gaming. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Once, I'm going to untie Knockout City you. was better than Fall Guys. Banned him forever. He's gone. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, oh, God. Why are they all... Oh, my God. There's so many ah! of them. Oh god, there's hold on. Alright, hold on. I've been playing too much psycho now. Oh I, I forget so how to play fighting, this. Game. He's fighting three rays at once, or it's one ray with three different pieces? No, three those, are, those are three different rays. Dude, do you see the line of rays behind them? Yeah. Mike, do you see that like in the background right there? That's a whole like row of Metal yeah. Gear rays. They said there was a fleet. Fucking Christ! Um, Boy, are you gonna yeah, learn? What does what is, what is Snake know about a fleet? Yeah. What you know about that fleet? Singular Metal Gears. Okay, Snake Tam, I just need you to be real with me. Which which explosive should I be using? The Stinger, the RGB6, or the Nikita? Stinger. Nikita Stinger. Stinger. Okay. Right. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, I only have two rations, too. Oh, this sucks. I don't like the way their faces look like they're looking at you. Look how beautiful they are. They are very beautiful. Oh, my God. Always I can't go get a fucking play. break here. I hit, I hit the wrong button. I hit the wrong button. This is the first moment that I've really, I've, I've taken a second to realize how nerdy Raiden's run is. This is absolutely absurd. Can you imagine how much, like, this is so much overkill. Oh! Uh, I will give you a pro tip. You try aiming for the leg. See what happens. Okay. Okay. So I was originally gonna do that, but I was like, the head's gotta be the weak spot there, Sam. It's gotta be it. Yeah. Just start squirting out blood? So what you can do is hit him in the leg and then hit him in the face. When you hit him in the leg, it like oh, it, like it, it almost like opens. stuns him a little bit. Yeah, yeah. it's mouth open, so you can go oh. the rhythm and shoot the legs ah. to the face. What? Oh, fuck off! Now shoot the face. Oh! Great double tap right there. Wow. Great double oh. tap. Wow, Tam, you're so good. This took me like two days. <laughs> really? But again, I was like 14. Yeah, I can't even. I, what, what games was I playing at 14, Mike? You know? How even Let's see. What, what, what year was that? that at 14. 2014. Ah, I keep pressing the wrong button. Oh, that's right. We were 14 at very different years. Yeah. I forget how young you are. 2009? I was playing Arkham Asylum. Damn. This made me so mad old. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's funny. 2004, yes. 14. I was 14 in 08. I was 18. Oh! Uh-oh. Uh-oh. They're Wait, moving. Oh, fuck. Oh, oh, no! <laughs> oh, what the shit? No, that's not good. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this is I'll bad. Of, oh, my God. Look at look at that. I love you, Ray. I only have one ration left, Mike. Oh, this, this is, is bad. This, this is like one of those where it's like, can we, a good thing you saved about a billion times. If exactly. If it goes down wrong, we can just restart a save. No, that's not true. He's got 21 saves. That's how it goes. He's got 21 saves. Yeah, and if so we need to go back and collect some more rations somewhere we else and then go come. back to half the game. To yeah, back rations. to the beginning. That first save. Yeah. See, I feel like me and Mike were playing the same games when we were 14. Because I was definitely yeah. playing PS2 games way late. <laughs> I was playing Hello San Andreas in 2008. Oh, San Andreas. Oh, God. Oh, there we go. Nice, nice job. There goes one. How does it blow up? What is it oh, there we go. There we go. We got another. We got it. Yep. Blow up. Nice. All right, hit it again, dude. Hit it again. Just pump a couple in there. Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, what? Died? Oh. Oh, dear. that sucks. So, one thing I'll say is your, your um, cartwheel will uh -huh. get you out of the range of most 
um, oh, attacks. Okay. Yeah, so I, I, I noticed that like wherever kind of like um, plane that I was on, that's where the gun shot was going to reach. And so like yeah. get there and, and then the, like back up a little bit. And um, the same is for the rockets. Usually you can like do a cartwheel out of the area when where you're standing when it fires and you're good. Mm, um, okay. And with that in mind, you can be way more aggressive. So just start going for the leg and then face and like being che cheeky with it. All right, guys, uh, I gotta go. This is my favorite game. I hope you guys fucking like beating it without me. I hate all of you. Bye, love you Kevin. Too, we love you, Kevin. No, oh, god damn it! I keep pressing the wrong button. I keep like pressing trigger to pull up the gun and then wanting to hit trigger again to like. Oh fuck, it's bad. It's bad, Mike. We so go. will we see more mon? Like, Wait, hold on. Skulls in Metal Gear Three continue to update with the time and the the age of the controls, or will it still be kind of wonky? The controls get considerably better. Okay, really? cool. Okay. With Metal Gear not Three, in, or not, do we gotta wait for game, no. Okay. Yeah, the next game is gonna be pretty similar. To this game. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Good enough. Good to mentally prepare for. It. Jesus Christ, man. Metal Gear Solid Three does give you a little more like. To move oh! There we go. Nice. You can, you can ride it. it. You, you can do after touch on it. Remember that. I don't like how it, it's dancing a little bit. You know, it freaks me out a little bit. Oh! Oh shit! Okay. All right. All right. Two down. Two down. Two to go. Right? Or are they just nice. gonna keep? They're just gonna keep coming. Mike, look at the name of the uh, the race. Oh Ray. shit! Oh fuck you! That's bullshit. See how they're all a variant of Rose? Yeah, yep. I see that now. Yeah, totally. Oh shit! I was. I didn't get another some ration. Dicky stuff happening at the end of. This. I didn't I get another do. ration. That sucks. That it, re it really sucks, Mike. You got this. You've been playing perfect, Kevin. When I saw Kevin last night, he was like, Bear's been playing so well. He's a pro gamer, so everybody knows oh! he's Oh! Nice. Look at, oh my god, look at that. That was like watching an action movie. <laughs> that was like watching Black Widow. He does look like Black Widow doing some things. Yeah. Boy, call him Courtney oh! Ocelot. Ooh! Oh, we got some singer Ooh, fucking okay. bullets over here. That's dope. That's dope. Oh, we got more. How low am I right now on them? Probably low. Probably low. We've been using a lot. Oh! Woo. Nice dodge right there. Mike, I'm going to guess once we beat this one that fully spells Rose. That's gonna be okay. the end of it. That's gonna be the end of it. Because they've been slowly, be over time, spelling rose. And now we have this one that straight up says rose. That's my guess. Slash hope. This might just go on forever. Who knows, Mike? You know what I'm saying? And she was out here asking you what day it is. Like, Dude, you're right. Like, what day is it? It's gonna be battle time here in a minute. Dude, I never put together that spell rose. That's wild. Oh, shit! Ooh, tough. Oh, I'm down bad. Oh, fuck. Oh, no. Oh, it's bad. Oh. It's bad. Oh, okay. B-O-1-F. Uh-oh. What's that Boyfriend. one? Boyfriend. Boof. Bop. <laughs> We're boofing it. <laughs> Got all these fucking singer missiles. Give me some fucking rations, please. Please, sir. Not to oh. anybody right now that is gifted subs that is subscribed at the Prime Gaming to Tier 3 level. Thank you all so much for the support. One fourth of the bar now filled up today. Huh! Nice job. There we go. There we go. No! Oh. Right there, I see you. Oh. Good. You're back up. Now you just gotta play perfect. Got the timing of these attacks suck. Fuck you. Oh, that sucks. 
Ray is super dope. Compared to Rex, yeah. Ray is very dope. All right, here we go. Why does my life keep going down? What's happening right now? Oh, am I bleeding? Am I bleeding out? Is that what it is, Sam? Bandage. Put that bandage yeah. on. These motherfuckers. Smoke a cig. No, that won't help, Mike. <laughs> Smoke a cig. It might no, dude, it's gonna take out more health, bro. <laughs> oh, this is bad. It'll give you windy as well. Trouble breathing. Giant robot. I don't like their little dance here. <gasps> no! Oh. This is gonna be a big fight. Uh, this, you did respond. very well. You got so I said it. I said it a little while back, but it, and it's not particularly gonna be helpful, but it might in a pinch. When it when your health is orange and it's doing that bleeping, beep beep beep. beep yeah, beep, that's when I'm bleeding just, out. You can just stop moving and crouch, and it'll recover it. Oh. Uh, yeah, I don't know if that's going to be really helpful. That's going to be difficult. Yeah, uh, with the, but the, the timing of this. But if you can time it, okay, you might be all right. Yeah, yeah. 15 extra that, minutes. Thank you all so much. Um, that was good, though. Yeah. I would say, like, the thing to do is just get really aggressive about hitting them in the leg and the face. You can also hit the, the rays that are standing in the back, even if you're there's one up front. Okay. Basically, any any it, ray. On yeah, I was thinking I probably it. could. It was. It's just like the I can't control the camera, so it's just like one of those things where it's like I don't. Yeah. It's it's worth. It's. Uh, you can also employ oh. chaff grenades to screw them up if you want. Oh, oh. the chaff does fuck them up. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Smart. you should. It should, but for me generally, I just go straight for the. And my my tactic was shoot them in the leg, shoot them in the face, cartwheel away, shoot them in the leg, shoot them in the face, cartwheel away. That's mm. it. Like you can mm. build a rhythm to that where you okay. don't even stop. All right. Well, we're getting to the point where my dog walker should be here in a couple minutes. So, okay. just, uh, thank you, Ignacio Rojas, Ant Man. So many of you for helping us fill up that bar one fourth of the way. Ren Frost, right there. Uh, Torbjorn, thank you. Can't wait for Horizon Two. Blessing, Horizon Two. Dude, Get you excited. I've been thinking about Horizon Two a lot lately. I've been, I, I, I've been having flashbacks to that state of play that they did a few months ago, showing off gameplay, and I've been thinking all about how much like how, it's. That game seems like it's fixing any problem that I have with Horizon Zero Dawn and like Horizon Horizon Forbidden West for me is the exact game that I'm in the mood for right now, especially playing Ghost Stream uh, Legends and Ghost Stream of Director's Cut Iki Island. Like I'm just in the mood for good open worlds, right? Like include Genshin Impact in there too. Like I just I just want to jump in an open world. I want to have I want to have one of those uh, th those glides. You know, I want I want to be able to glide through the sky. And the Horizon Forbidden West is adding that. I'm in the mood for it, Mike. I'm in the mood for it. I'm excited. I'm I'm in the mood to get raid ready with you, bless for. Uh, oh my god, Ghost of Tsushima Legend. I love We're how like close. into everybody it. Ghost is getting. Mike's into it. Oh. Andy's into it. It's it's Come great. On, are you guys all playing? I would love to play. I need some. I need Dude, Tam, jump into Legends. Damn, get into Legends with us, man. We need a crew. We need a crew. I'm right, sorry, y'all. This chair is very uncomfortable that Kevin has, and I have no <laughs> idea what's happening with it. <laughs> it's like one of these cool chairs is just so weird. It's so weird. Oh, is that um, one of the office chairs? Like, I have no idea. It's like comfortable if you lean back, but if you mm. sit in it normally, it's not. Just lean back, Mikey. Chill the fuck weird. out, bro. I'm, I'm trying, bro. I'll I'm say trying. too, watch, watching Barry take out uh, Metal Gear Ray slowly but surely also has me hyped for Horizon. Because, uh, Mike, have you ever played Horizon Zero Dawn? Just taking out big robots. I played three hours of it and then I stopped. So, like, for me, I. <clears throat> excuse me. I started her. These almonds are getting to me. These almonds are going down the wrong pipe. Uh, for me, I got <laughs> about like eight ish hours into Horizon Zero Dawn, and the Breath of the Wild came out, and I fell off hard off of Horizon Zero Dawn because I put all my effort and time into Breath of the Wild. Uh, came back around into Horizon Zero Dawn years later and finally finished it. And the thing that clicked for me in that game was um, the methodically taking out robots, right? Like taking it like shooting at their parts trying to take their parts off take them out from their weak spots and kind of have that slow burn of almost like monster hunter like right like trying to just methodically take apart these robots with my arsenal of weapons that was so satisfying to me by the time i got to the end of that game and again watching that state of play that we got a few months ago the, the weapons that they introduced in that state of play have me so excited to fuck around with those things because again like that game i think by the time you get to the end of it and you really feel out combat gets really fun um, but yeah, like I, I've been thinking about that a lot, but Mike for you, like, have you played any more legends? Have you upgraded anymore? 
No, we're at 56. The last time I, okay. I played was with you. Okay, okay. We're going to get you there. Score. We're, we're getting closer. We're climbing right now. How many people do we need? Eight? Six? For the raid, we need four. Oh, it's only four? Okay, then we yep. solid. Okay, so we need to get Tam and Andy so we can at least have one more person because we got you, me, and Kevin it. right now. We're set. Um, with this new Horizon patch, will it be awesome to go back to like Ghost has been, Bless, or should I just skip it? I'd say it's like worth now going it's optimized. It. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean the patch is mainly 60 FPS, which is big, right? Like I love. I'm I'm always a, a an advocate for performance mode. Uh, so I think I think with that is worth going back to. I also think it's worth going back to just for story because Horizon, I think ha narrative ha does have an importance in that game in a way where there are going to be things that happen in Horizon Zero, Horizon Zero Dawn that do feed into Horizon Forbidden West in a way that I would say you might as well just experience those things firsthand. And I think the game is easy enough to mainline. It's not one of those open world action RPGs that you have to do side quests to level up your character to even do okay. the main quest. You, uh, from what I understand, you can mainline Horizon Zero Dawn and have a decent time with it. I, I believe Tim Geddes, when he played it, mainlined it uh, and really loved it. And so, like, if you do that, I'm sure you can not. You, you said you played like what three hours? I think yeah. you can knock it out in like 17 more hours. Or if you just start from the beginning, I'm sure it'd be like 20 hours for you to finish it. Okay. Okay. Uh, Moogle, the slide says, Mike, don't miss out on one of the best games of the generation for PS4. Okay, good to know. I mean, I'm excited for the second one. I love Robo Dinosaurs. I'm into it. I yeah. still want Far Cry to just make Far Cry Jurassic Park. I don't know why they're holding back on a million dollar, billion dollar idea. Did you not play Far Cry Primal? No, Far Cry. Don't even bring that to me, Blessing. Don't even come at me with that. That's not, not the same. It's not the same. What do you oh want? Oh my then? gosh. I want Chris Pratt running around an island full of dinosaurs, Turok okay. style, and I want dumb witty jokes. I want bad guys. I want dinosaurs eating bad guys. Dinosaurs mm -hmm. trying to eat me. I mean, I just want Jurassic Park. You don't want cavemen. You want like no, a, you I don't want, want like, no cavemen. I don't yeah, want. you want like you want it to be modernized. Spear. You just yeah. want there. You want dinosaurs to just happen to be there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, ex <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> All right, fair enough, fair enough. All right, I'm back. The dog is on her walk. Let's get back into this, y'all. Oh, you should play Blood Dragon if you haven't played Blood Dragon. I played Blood Dragon. I like Blood okay. Dragon. Did you play that one? It was pretty good. I like yeah, that I some, one. Yeah, I played some Blood Dragon. I really like Blood Dragon. I, I also like played um, Trials from the Blood Dragon, yes. which was uh -huh. Trials Fusion, yeah. Blood uh -huh. Dragon thing. Yeah, and yeah. I liked it for what it was. It wasn't excellent. Like I, I think it had like a lot of issues, but it still has the stupid tone that you get from Blood Dragon. And I think enough of it is fun enough. Like, you can, it's basically a side-scrolling shooter at, at a certain point. You're running around and shooting, shooting up bad guys in a child's game. It's stupid, but it's fun. Look at you working this right now. Go, oh! to, go to work, bro. Me. Oh my god. Maybe not mess about. I like that they're all named Rose. I'm very excited to see what that leads into. I think I'm right in thinking if you start, if you hit a ray with, an, with a rocket in the leg while it's attacking, you will you will disrupt the attack. Okay. So okay. just like okay. doing it. Um, oh gun. shit! Oh. Oh, this is right bad. Bit of ration. Yep. So like, uh, you can use that when it's like doing its machine gun. Mm, okay. so like knock it oh, off. fuck off that shit. Fuck! Oh, oh man, that sucks. Try and uh, think about, don't look at your missile. Just hit the fire button, then unequip and move on.
job. Oh, this is a crazy part. Oh! Fuck you, dude. Oh. Oh. I don't need fucking missiles. I need. Wow. That shot Did is bullshit. Oh, up? fuck you. Again, if you're building the rhythm there. Oh, fuck you. Alright, it wasn't that. I thought that was gonna be it, Mikey. Man. Oh, fuck oh, you, dude. No. Still going, this is crazy. Still no fucking ration revival, bro. This sucks. Nice. Is that even affecting it? Nope. It's bleeding out the leg? It's bleeding out the leg? That's crazy? Got it, that one. Oh my. That's tough. Bear, you did right. really good right there, bro. Look, I good. mean, for two rations, maybe three, you're crushing it, bro. You're doing it. You got the rhythm. You got the rhyme. Keep riding it, bro. Now, Blessing, do you remember this fight when you were playing this way back in the day? Do you remember this? I 1,000% I remember this, yeah. Really? Yeah, I don't I don't remember how difficult it was, um, but I definitely remember Fuck. struggling just a little bit. Okay. Okay. But I remember, I remember it being epic. Yeah, it feels way more epic than our fight that uh, Snake had in the first one. But Snake yeah. also had a little bit 
you know, a little more work up and a different vibe how it felt because like, you know, Cyborg Ninja came in and like partially saved us and allowed us to get in there for the fight. This one feels much different tonally than what we were doing in the last one. Oh. Dude, I just, honestly, I just remember this whole ending season. Starting from Raiden getting captured and going, like being naked doing cartwheels, all the way up to this stretch for me was an entire moment. Like this game, this game has such a bonkers slash solid last three yeah. hours to it. Okay, who's boss. Boss baby Barrett. Big job. Yeah. Oh, that lock is it, it, baby. That is it. Tearing through. Funny thing about Ray is, especially on this scale, it's one of the weaker Metal Gears. And just like the the power that it has. Yeah, that's why you're able to like rip through them because they're basically cheap and made on mass. Mmm, that makes sense. They made them for the uh, the Marines. Rex was uh, one of a kind. I'm getting stuff for 70 months. Barrett being an absolute G as always. Capital G for gamer right now. MLG status. You gotta be. Oh, fuck you. Oh. Oh, it still got him though.
Oh, this is never gonna end, Mikey. This, I mean, you just tearing through them, thankfully. Oh, do we have multiple of them on the fucking platform now? Oh, okay, no. Great achievement. Nice, nice, nice. I expected a little more fight than Uh oh. What do you mean a little more fight? We just took down like a handful of those fuckers. <clears throat> oh shit! Hold them off. Give you time to get away. What about you? <laughs> this is suicide! Your nano machines, they're transmitting your vital signs to the Patriots. Oh shit. If you die, my child dies. Oh no! Oh shit. The child. I see. So that's why you sold your troops out to me. So many dead, and they all died trusting you. Damn. Weren't they your comrades? Damn. No, not just comrades. Family. Huh? Do anything for a child, though, bro. I know mm. I'm going to help, but at least my child. I applaud your attitude. Also, where am I going to run off to? We're just we've got this one platform. Oh shit. Oh fuck! It's the P90 that Kevin loves in Fortnite. Uh, Fortnite. Dude, he did a double flip on it. Oh, he's doing a triple flip on it, bro. Man is not stopping. He's covering his eye. He's doing a blindfold. Yeah, he's got an eye patch. I have to what? Oh no. Oh god. She's so not gonna be rush hour three. <laughs> She's not gonna be in Melody Saw three. Yeah. Dang. Neck broken. Enjoy the show, Jack. Let's pick up where we left off. That man is the ex-president. Ex-president just murdered a woman yeah. live in 4K on the internet. What's going on? What's wrong with it? Uh oh. GW, it's out of control. What? It's turning on humans, Mike. It's turning to Skynet. Look at that. Dude, no way. Who's controlling these things, you think, Mike? There's got to be somebody inside these. Of one of these. these will be controlled by AI. Oh, right, 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 right AI. But they were also bleeding. Oh, shit. Throughout the neural network. I can't shut it down. What happened? Maybe some kind of virus. The Patriots? I don't know. Ocelot, what have you been up to? It's too late. Arsenal system control is going haywire. It's on an emergency ascent course. Oh shit. It's gonna go up, Mike. It's flying somewhere. Also, that it. that alarm noise, I think, is the same exact uh, sound asset from. 007 oh. Oh. It's music, man. Oh. 
Why couldn't we be taking Metal Gears down like this, Mikey? Holy shit. This man's insane. Uh-oh. Oh! oh! Now that is my president. Damn the Patriots. Wait, so it was a, a it was a bug from the Patriots? Or was that not the Emma Emmerich's uh, virus working? Oh, shit. You still have some well, I guess for virus it's to shut it all down, yeah. right? Can you imagine if you saw Joe Biden do that? Oh, fuck. <clears throat> oh! S snake? Bring him in. Damn, dude. We escaped. Went through this facility buck naked. Fought all of these fucking Metal Gear Rays, Mike, just to get captured again? It's insane. Insane. Yeah, we're gonna save. I don't have enough. I don't have enough yeah. save files. Are you awake yet, Jack? Uh. GW. The Arsenal AI is corrupted beyond repair. I Good. admit that I underestimated you. Uh -oh. I'll squeeze the answers out of you instead, my son. Oh shit! Oh, oh shit! He's choking. I was not prepared for this. Yeah. Which, yeah, Nobody you know clipped this. Nobody <laughs> clipped this. What do you hope to hear? You know he doesn't know anything. It's not him I want the answers from. Oh shit, Snake. Snake's got some answers. What do you mean? That's not your business. Oh really? It so happens I have some business of my own to attend to. Planning to hijack Arsenal? Huh? You were going to screw me over, weren't you? Damn. Who talked? Ocelot? Not exactly. I was the one who used Ocelot to suggest the idea to you in the first place. What? I was planning to give you Arsenal to begin with. Oh shit. Why the uncharacteristic generosity? <laughs> I'm no philanthropist. Arsenal is far from impregnable. It needs other Metal Gears as guards, a huge payload of warheads, and full air, sea, and land support to function efficiently. Against a large attack force without support, Arsenal is nothing more than a gigantic coffin. Seizing Damn. Arsenal gear was never the real objective. What was your objective then? A list of names of the Patriots. Oh, fuck. <sighs> They were planning to extend their control to digital information flow with GW and Arsenal. That means the information they want to filter out is contained in GW. Including that list of the highest 12 members of the Patriots Wiseman's Committee. And once you knew who they were, you would cross out their names one by one. While we, with our useless Arsenal, drew their fire. Very good. You were using the way Solid the Snake law. went about this, different. But your personally, I don't think it's great. Snag. But I, I approve of what he's trying to do. Hmm. Try to take out all these fucking patrons no, who are controlling there is the world. Another way. Really? I respect it. But we have our own plans to carry out. We'll take the arsenal since you don't care for it anyway. The purified hydrogen bomb is ready to go. A nuclear strike won't stop them. It will damage their power source. The mindless masses that they control. First things first. Of course. That was what you wanted. I won't stop you. Good luck. Thanks, but I have quite enough of that. <laughs> Ooh. 
What exactly there did you is. find there so is. funny? Charades usually are humorous. I wouldn't have minded watching some more of it, but we're running a little short on time. What are you talking about? Everything you've done here has been scripted. A little exercise set up by us. Exercise? Oh, shit. The S3 plan was conceived as a means to reduce soldiers on par with Solid Snake. That's what I told you. But the VR training the boy was put through is not the meat of the project. You think this little terrorist incident is your own doing, Solidus? This is the S3 training colonel. An orchestrated recreation of Shadow Moses. What? Ames and the President's deaths. The ninja. The computer virus that mimics Fox Die. Did you really think they were all a coincidence? Mm -hmm. Ames' own nanomachines were used to shut down his pacemaker. I arranged for the appearance of the ninja as well. As for the president, although Johnson realized what was going on, he played out his allotted part. As for the computer virus, it's a digital counterpart of Fox Die. It was also designed to eliminate every scrap of information regarding the Patriots from GW. Your plan was invalidated even before execution, Solidus. Fat Man was a different story. He's one of our own people. A sort of examiner we hired to test the boy's progress before letting him tackle the exercise proper. We had to arrange for Stillman's presence to coax the maniac into agreeing. If the boy had allowed the big shell to be destroyed, this exercise would have ended there. Yeah, no the project doubt it would all has no room for failures. What do you mean? Given the right situation, the right story, anyone can be shaped into snake. Even rookies can fight like men of experience. An instant creation of genius. And this training kernel would provide more than enough data to formulate such a program. You, Dead Cell, Olga, you're all nothing but this pawns is the they showed placed to create the perfect simulation. To make it look like Snake was the main Solidus. Character. You and the boy were selected because your relationship resembles the one between Snake and Big Boss. Wow. Fortune, you and the rest of Dead Cell stand in for the Foxhound squad that Snake took on in Shadow Moses. You're the most impressive collection of freaks outside of Foxhound. We've gone to a lot of trouble to set you up against the boy. That story about purified hydrogen bombs is just the tip of the iceberg. The project was already underway when I sunk that tanker, along with your old man two years ago. Throwing your husband in the brig was a part of it, too. You were told that the eradication of Dead Cell six months ago was an act of the Patriots. We provoked and encouraged your hatred. And you opted for vengeance, just as we planned. All orchestrated? Except for the appearance of the real Solid Snake. I wonder now who sent for you. All our misfortune was just a part of your project? Oh! He don't miss. That's why they call him Revolver Ocelot. How could... You're no Lady Luck. You have nothing that we didn't give you. Damn. Ooh. They gave her her power? What? Do you know why no 
bullet could hit you? It wasn't magic, or some new age mumbo jumbo. Certainly wasn't your psychic talents. Damn. It was all staged by the Patriots. Staged? You were being shielded by the electromagnetic weapons technology that the Patriots developed. Your dead cell comrades loved your father and husband. We needed a pathetic wretch like you to keep them focused. You've been our puppet all along, just like Olga. No! You were hamming it up as the tragic heroine, thanks to the script that the Patriots wrote for you. Pure self-indulgence, absorbed in your own misfortune. You couldn't get enough of the drama. Damn. I could have died whenever I wanted to. Hmm, thought I got her in the heart. <laughs> It missed. Now I remember. Your heart's on the right. Waste of metal, my dear, but your luck's run out. This is the little gizmo. There's no such thing as miracles or the supernatural. Only cutting edge technology. Arsenal and clean up the refuse from the exercise. Just try. Are we about to fight alongside our dad here? Oh, he's got two swords too, Mike. Dude, the revolver Ocelot, bro. This guy's the real deal. He's the real baddie. <laughs> oh, shit. Hey, kid. Cut me free. Who's this then? Dang. Damn, how's she still up? After a bullet in the heart, bro. Fortune! You idiot! Get the hell away from there! I told you, your luck's run out. Take your reward. It's all the payload Ray has. Die! Ooh, pretty fireworks. Everybody down! Oh! She's actually still able to do it a little bit. Oh god. Midichlorians! Use what little psychic powers you have left! What the? Impossible! Again. 
damn, dude. That's all she wanted, Mike. Damn. Try this instead. No! Uh oh. Oh god. Oh shit. It's his hand. It's his hand. No! It's liquid. No, not this arm all along waiting for the right <laughs> time to awaken I mean yeah that, that's been built up pretty well over the over the course of the you game were inside ocelot yes a sleeper in the arm of a patriot spy it was you two years ago exactly I was controlling him Snake, it was I that leaked information about Arsenal to your partner and got you out here. Oh. But you're the only one that can free me. After all... I'm off to bury the Patriots for good. You know where they are? How? Jeff Grubb in chat says, I've chose never played this game. As my host. Jeff Grubb in chat. Before I go, I have a family matter to settle with both of you. I am shook. There's room for only Jeff one Grubb. snake and one big boss. Is he trying to be both? Big the big big snake boss? Oh shit. Mikey, it was liquid that leered um solid snake back to the tanker. So the snake could like um kind of help Liquid Snake uh take control of Ocelot's body, essentially. I think. I think that's yeah, Liquid is currently in control of Ocelot. Because of his phantom arm. Like surfing. It's a good way to go. Uh-oh. Like surfing. What a line. All that music. Break break free. Oh! Liquid! Stop this thing! Hey, Snake! You coming? Yeah. He's gonna dive on it. Snake! Snake is a badass. Oh, yep, there it is. It's being lifted up in the Take air. I was wondering when it was actually gonna happen. All right, there's some other shit. I was wondering, I was like, where did the city go in the background? We're like, what's happening? <laughs> there we go. Which bridge in New York is this? Like, which bridge are they about to destroy right now? Oh no, it fits perfectly right out, right yeah, underneath yeah. there. Okay. It's like that's like good design. <laughs> Ergonomic. the city. Oh shit. George Washington Bridge says Jeff Grubb. I don't oh, how is Jeff Grubb? I don't how believe is him. Jeff Grubb evading the uh, email only chat? Jeff Grubb's a badass. I don't know. Wow. He's got Federal Jeff Grubb. Damn. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Do you know what day it is today? April 30th? 
Would have been way cooler if he said the 20th. Damn. You know. George Washington took office as the first president of the United States of America 200 years ago today. And it happened right here. We were going to declare another independence. The dawn of a new nation here. The end of the Patriots' secret rule. Liberation of this country. This was where it was supposed to begin. Damn. This is where freedom could have been born. All right, that's coming back around because Rose has been asking us, uh, what's oh, tomorrow? You want power at any cost. Jack, it's not power I want. What I wanted to take back from the Patriots are things like freedom, civil rights, opportunities. You saw the snake the face? Principles of this country. What's happening right He's, now, uh, Tam? Solid snake. Solid Everything snake is absolutely based. It's about to be wiped out by their digital censorship. Jack, listen to me. We're all born with an expiration date. No one lasts forever. Life is nothing but a grace period for turning the best of our genetic material into the next generation. The data of life is transferred from parent to child. That's how it works. But we have no heirs, no legacy. We brothers are called Les Enfants Terribles. Cloned from our father with the ability to reproduce conveniently engineered out. What is our legacy if we cannot pass the torch? Snake cannot be the baby daddy. Proof of our existence, a mark well, of We knew uh, Jack was just like adopted or whatever weird relationship that they had together when he was a baby soldier. When the torch is passed on from parent to child, it extends beyond DNA. Information is imparted as well. Also, shout out, we're going an extra 30 minutes. All I want is to be remembered by other people, by history. The Patriots are trying to protect their power, their own interests, by controlling the digital flow of information. I want my memory, my existence to remain. Unlike an intron of history, I will be remembered as an exon. That will be my legacy, my mark in history. But the Patriots would deny us even that. I will triumph over the Patriots and liberate us all, and we will become the Sons of Liberty. Ah, it's the title of the game. Hey, he said the he's thing. Said Who's calling us now? Is it Creepy Campbell? Yep. Raiden, are you receiving? We're still here. How is that possible? The AI was destroyed. Only GW. Uh -oh. Who are you? To begin with, we're not what you'd call human. Over the past 200 years, a kind of consciousness formed layer by layer in the crucible of the White House. It's not unlike the way life started in the oceans four billion years ago. The White House was our primordial soup, a base of evolution. We are formless. We are the very discipline and morality that Americans invoke so often. How can anyone hope to eliminate us? As long as this nation exists, so will we. Cut the crap! If you're immortal, why would you take away individual freedoms and censor the net? <laughs> Jack, don't be silly. Oh shit. Don't you know that our plans have your interests, not ours, in mind? What? Jack, listen carefully, like a good boy. The mapping of the human genome was completed early this century. As a result, the evolutionary log of the human race lay open to us. We started with genetic engineering, and in the end, we succeeded in digitizing life itself. But there are things not covered by genetic information. What do you mean? Human memories, ideas, culture, history. Genes don't contain any record of human history. Is it something that should not be passed on? Should that information be left at the mercy of nature? We've always kept records of our lives, through words, pictures, symbols, from tablets to books. Back to tablets. But not all the information was inherited by later generations. A small percentage of the whole was selected and processed, then passed on. Not unlike genes, really. That's what history is, Jack. But in the current digitized world, 
Trivial information is accumulating every second, preserved in all its triteness. Never fading, always accessible. Rumors about petty issues, misinterpretation, slander. All this junk data, preserved in an unfiltered state, growing at an alarming rate. It will only slow down social progress, reduce the rate of evolution. Right. You seem to think that our plan is one of censorship. Are you telling me it's not? You're being silly. What we propose to do is not to control content, but to create context. Create context? The digital society furthers human flaws and selectively rewards development of convenient half-truths. Kojima was Just in his fucking look at bag. the strange juxtapositions yeah. of morality around you. Billions spent on new weapons in order to humanely murder other humans. Rights of criminals are given more respect than the privacy of their victims. Although there are people suffering in poverty, huge donations are made to protect endangered species. Everyone grows up being told the same thing. Be nice to other people. But beat out the competition. You're special. Believe in yourself and you will succeed. But it's obvious from the start that only a few can succeed. You exercise your right to freedom. Yo, Kojima's base with this anti-capitalism shit. Rest. Let's go. To avoid no, conflict he's doing. He's no, and protect he's doing. each other from hurt. The untested truths, spun by different interests, continue to churn and accumulate in the sandbox of political correctness and value systems. Everyone withdraws into their own small gated community, afraid of a larger forum. They stay inside their little ponds, leaking whatever truth suits them into the growing cesspool of society at large. The different cardinal truths neither clash nor mesh. No one is invalidated, but nobody is right. Not even natural selection can take place here. The world is being engulfed in truth. And this is the way the world ends. Not with a bang, but a whimper. We're Classic trying quote. to stop that from happening. It's our responsibility as rulers. Just as in genetics, unnecessary information and memory must be filtered out to stimulate the evolution of the species. And you think you're qualified to decide what's necessary and not? Absolutely. Who else could wade through the sea of garbage you people produce, retrieve valuable truths, and even interpret their meaning for later generations? That's what it means to create context. I'll decide for myself what to believe and what to pass on. But is that even your own idea? Or something Snake told you? <sighs> That's the proof of your incompetence right there. You Damn. lack the qualifications to exercise free will. Damn! That's not true. I have the right. Does something like a self exist inside of you? That which you call self serves as nothing more than a mask to cover your own being. In this era of ready-made truths, self is just something used to preserve those positive emotions that you occasionally feel. Another possibility is that self is a concept you conveniently borrowed under the logic that would endow you with some sense of strength. That's crap! Is it? Would you prefer that someone else tell you? All right, then. Explain it to him. Jack, you're simply the best. And you got there all by yourself. Oh, what happened? Do you feel lost? Why not try a bit of soul searching? Don't think you'll find anything, though. Ironic that although self is something that you yourself fashion, every time something goes wrong, you turn around and place the blame on something else. It's not my fault. It's not your fault. In denial, you simply resort to looking for another, more convenient truth in order to make yourself feel better. Leaving behind in an instant the so-called truth you once embraced. Should someone like that be able to decide what is truth? Should someone like you even have the right to decide? You've done nothing but abuse your freedom. You don't deserve to be free. We're not the ones smothering the world. You are. The individual is supposed to be weak, but far from powerless. A single person has the potential to ruin the world. And the age of digitized communication has given even more power to the individual. Too much power for an immature species. Building a legacy involves figuring out what is wanted and what needs to be done for that goal. All this you used to struggle with. Now, we think for you. 
We are your guardians, after all. You want to control human thought? Human behavior? Of course. Anything can be quantified nowadays. That's what this exercise was designed to prove. You fell in love with me just as you were meant to, after all. Isn't that right, Jack? Damn. Ocelot was not told the whole truth, to say the least. We rule an entire nation. Of what interest would a single soldier, no matter how able, be to us? The S3 plan does not stand for solid snake simulation. What it does stand for is selection for societal sanity. The S3 is a system for controlling human will and consciousness. S3 is not you, a soldier trained in the image of Solid Snake. It is a method, a protocol that created a circumstance that made you what you are. So you see, we're the S3, not you. What you experienced was the final test of its effectiveness. That's crazy. You heard what President Johnson said. The Arsenal's GW system is the key to their supremacy. The objective of this exercise was to establish such a method. We used Shadow Moses as a paradigm for the exercise. I wonder if you would have preferred a fantasy setting. <laughs> we chose that backdrop because of its extreme circumstances. It was an optimal test for S3's crisis management capacity. If the model could trigger, control, and solve this, it would be ready for any contingency. And now, we have our proof. Raiden, there are also reasons behind your selection. Solidus raised plenty of other child soldiers. Do you know why we chose you over them? Hmm. It was because you were the only one who refused to acknowledge the past. All the others remember what they were and pay for it daily. But you turn your back on everything you don't like. You do whatever you like, see only the things you like, and for yourself alone. Yes, Rose can attest to that. You refused to see me for what I was. I lied to you, but I wanted to be caught. You pretended to be understanding, to be a gentleman. You never made a conscious attempt to reach out to me. The only time you did was when I gave you no choice but to do so. I was just trying not to... What? Trying not to hurt me? Dear, the one you were trying not to hurt was yourself. Avoiding the truth under the guise of kindness is all that you did. It occurred to you to do nothing but look out for yourself. Even if you claim that it was for my sake, that feeling was nowhere to be seen. In the end, everything was for your sake. I was never part of the picture. <laughs> exactly right. So you see, you're a perfect representative of the masses we need to protect. This is Wake why up, we sheeple. told you. You accepted the fiction we've provided, obeyed our orders, and did everything you were told to. The exercise is a resounding success. Didn't I tell you that GW was still incomplete? But not anymore, thanks to you. Your persona, experiences, triumphs, and defeats are nothing but byproducts. The real objective was ensuring that we could generate and manipulate them. It's taken a lot of time and money, but it was well worth it considering the results. I think that's enough talk. It's time for the final exercise. Raiden, take Solidus down. Think again. I'm through doing what I'm told. Yeah. Oh, really? Aren't you forgetting something? If you die, my child dies. The termination of vital signals from your nanomachines means the death of Olga's child. Not to mention Shh. the death of Rose. She's wired the same way. Rose. Does she actually yeah, exist? Yeah, like, isn't of she part I of the AI? Jump. You have to believe me. Ah, Damn. believe, but L-I-E was capitalized, bro. Death. It's a fucking lie, bro. Solidus at least wants you dead. We will collect the necessary data from this last fight. Then we'll consider the exercise closed. <laughs> so, back. 
Jack the Ripper? Will it be Solidus, the Patriot's creation, or you, Solidus's creation? Our beloved monsters, enjoy yourselves. Jack, my son. God, my clone this brothers and I are called monsters, replicates of evil genes. You are one of a you can kind, take it off emote but only, still by the a way. monster shaped by a dark and secret history. I don't know what's left for people to try and spoil in this game. We need to decide which monstrosity will have the privilege of survival. By the way, Jack. I was the one who killed your parents. No! Another twist that maybe wasn't earned, but I claimed you for my there own. There you go. You as a soldier in the army of the devil. I am your foster father and your worst enemy. Why? Because I needed to know whether we were really someone else's creation. We're repeating history, Jack. Liquid and Solid hunted down Big Boss, trying to sever the tie that bound them to him. Unless you kill me and face your past, Jack, you will never escape. You'll stay in the endless loop, your own double helix. Dude, it's like very similar to. It's time um, we were both free. What's his face? Cyborg Ninja from the last game. It's like I killed that girl's parents and then became her big brother because I felt guilty. Are we about to have a sword fight? Let's go. Oh, he's got double swords still. Yeah, he does. I have other reasons for wanting you dead. The clues to the Patriots inside GW have been erased, but there are other traces. Inside you. What? The information is being carried by the nanomachines in your cerebral cortex oh, fuck. and throughout the neural network they formed. Dan Rector in chat, this is the greatest story ever told. I 100% agree. Agreed, Dan. Well said. Familiar to all his story, just the franchise. As the a whole. Story ever told. As a whole. Brace yourself. You can't be beat. Not even the Bible comes oh God. close, and that one was written by God. Whoa! <laughs> Finally, Tam says that. we're ah! all thinking. You called me on that. Ooh. Oh, dang. Oh, no. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you, dude? Wow. So many chats to duel the fate. I'll give you exactly. Oh, thing. shit. Oh, God. Oh. That's all. Oh, shit. Oh no! <laughs> oh, Dang, he choked you out. Real yeah, he quick. did. Fucking Doctor Octopus over here being a fucking real asshole. Quick, bro. bro, wait, what the fuck? Man. Sometimes the right stick works. Sometimes it doesn't. Just, what the fuck? Yeah, this controls like ass. I'm gonna be real there. Oh, that was badass. <laughs> Look at that ray tracing. Oh shit! You might, I think you might be better off just switching to punching. Really? I. This is why I don't like the blade. It's not good in this fight. I think you can take it off and just punch him. Oh god! What's wrong? I, I, I have nothing to animation. block him with. Yeah, then, he, though. he needs to. Yeah, that's the downside. So you're gonna have to cartwheel a lot. Okay. And stay on the move. Oh god, dude. The God, that fire actually does look really good. Yeah. Right, well, awesome. I did nothing there right, with those things. Oh, he's up on the wall, bro. There we go. Fucking finally something. Oh, shit. Is that the best you can do? Oh, he's that still going to slam you. Do? That's crazy. Yeah. I need a lock on. This sucks. <laughs> What's wrong with you? 
Daddy! Oh shit. Wait, why did that take down his... Oh god! What's wrong with you? I don't know. I'm gonna be real there. <laughs> oh, Thank take... you, FJ Ramirez, for the five gifted subs. Remember, the bar is halfway filled today. We're gonna go for the extra 30 minutes. We can fill it up all the way. Go for that extra hour here for the finale of Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty. Barrett on the ones and twos, just absolutely battling Solid Snake right now. Oh shit. Is that the best you could do? Oh. Is that the best you could do? Yes. To be honest. Yeah. Former president is a big shit talker. And he's three, two swords. Mm. What a concept for a character. Kojima really sat down his notepad and said, I'm going to make you? the president, but he's going to have Doc Ock arms. And fuck it, I'm giving him two blades. <laughs> it's like, bro, calm down. He only needed like two of those things. He watched a lot of G.I. Joe, I imagine, you know? Oh, he watched G.I. Joe so had like a lot of weird fucking characters. Dude watched G.I. Joe, he watched Spider-Man 2. <laughs> I, I think this came out before Spider-Man 2, though. Do you watch Star Wars Episode 1 through 3? I, I don't think 2 and 3 were out yet, Blessing. I think he it was, was just Phantom traveling. Menace. Do you think Kojima oh, no. doesn't have the technology to time travel? Look out! Look at how far ahead of he, he is of, uh, of everyone else. This man no! a game oh, shit. fake news in 2001. Oh! But like actual things. Oh god! Is that the best you can do? Uh, Burger King is here, uh, I guess. Oh, everybody oh, clocked Burger That's King is here, oh, bro. Shit. Especially with the Whoa. pace of this fight, we're gonna we're gonna take like a little like breather here. Here, I feel <laughs> that. that. I'm, I'm hungry too, man. Nowhere, hey, we also bro. have a lot to it. process too, so let's take a moment to maybe yeah. process. Some yeah, of this I'm shit. not even like I I haven't had breakfast, so bear. I totally feel feel better. Get that mm. Burger King, man. Mm. Treat yourself. Get that Burger King. Treat yourself. Treat yourself. I'm gonna go grab a drink. I'll be back in a sec. Go, Dude, go take yourself. Be, oh. Me and Mike, because I got I need I need to help. I need to like see how mike feels and see how mike's processing everything because we got we that codec call between raiden and the colonel and quote-unquote rose that back and yeah. forth is one of my if not my favorite back and forth in this game because i think oh. that's where that's where really i think kojima gets in his bag in terms of really revealing all the secrets of what the themes of this game are because like 
that's where he gets into his bag of oh no this is what digitized information means to the world this is these are my feelings of like fake news even though he doesn't verbatim verbatim say fake news a lot of the ideas that he invokes in that conversation are about fake news and it's about controlling people and it's about misinformation and stuff that in the last five years the world has really had to come to terms with and really deal with in really real ways uh and like that we, we had a talk before we started this game about how good this game has aged over the years and i think it was tim who said that this game has aged better than any video game that's that, that's come before it or even after it and i 1000 percent agree just in terms of just the, just the shit that it brings to the surface and what this whole game ends up being about but mike i want to ask ask you like for that interaction that we got between that Coda call and Raiden, and also like every everything we've had in the last, I guess, three to four hours of playing this game, like where are you at mentally with it? How do you feel about it? I feel like I'm lost, blessed, truly and honestly. I feel Very like I've fair. been put on a wild ride of like I thought I had everything down, and then after that fight to see like the team up situation with Fortune Snake, you know ride in and technically solid as snake while we were fighting off ocelot right and it's like what's happening here and then the mind uh beep of that call like you said there's just a lot going on and a lot to try to take in so quickly right it felt like a long time but it wasn't that long in all honesty and it's just like man that's a lot of information he, that he's he, throwing at us he threw he throws out so much and also should mention right that he talks about memes as well in that kodak call which is wild because again this game came out in 2001 this game was in development from like 98 to 2001 and he's tackling concepts that have really he come didn't to straight surface. up say meme though right I don't think he said the actually I forget if he said the word I, f I feel like he might have said the word meme once in there but not referring to li the literal memes but mm, okay. he might have okay, implied okay. it it might have been more of an implication I, I, in my mind he says it but I I can't remember um PR saying yes he does he said it once okay yes he really? does say it once wow. and I think he relates it to the idea of genes and passing down genes through like like it's like real life DNA genetics, but he's talking about it in the sense of information. And like the the fact that he uses the word meme is, I think, is the fucking craziest thing, right? Because he is, in ways, literally, literally referring to the way we use memes nowadays. Especially when you yeah. take that related to, like, related to like the um, last couple of elections we got. Related to how memes have influenced fake news and how and have influenced people's um, politics and ideologies. Through like Facebook and a other lot websites. of it's a, a lot of crazy the, yeah like he, I'm really digging the commentary I'm I'm kind of with Mike where like I feel like I'm a little lost in the sauce right now of like what the narrative mm -hmm. is supposed to be and we can break it down like hopefully once we finish it uh, if I beat uh, Solidus anytime soon because I'm going through this boss fight at a snail pace right now but I see the commentary of like Kojima looking ahead and seeing what the the power of the internet has and like how that will easily, uh, how that would easily, f um, kind of, um, help the established political machines delve out information, how they see fit. Um, and uh, through like a different, uh, arms and stuff as well, like through the internet, through news, uh, corporations and stuff like that. It's very fascinating stuff and I'm really digging it. Also there, you know, there's some, yeah. Anti-capitalism sentiment in there that I I really enjoyed. I'm all about that kind of shit. Um, so yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm I, I feel like I'm pulling the themes out. It's still plot-wise, I'm still like, all right, what, what's going on a little bit? Are these like AI yeah. that have lived in the the for somehow have that lived for two hundred years in the White House? Like, what the fuck is going on? To be there? to be clear too, because Chad is like split on whether or not they actually did use the word meme or not. The, he the the idea of memes is basically there, right? And I know like in the way that he is talking about memes in two thousand one is very different from the literal memes that we talk about with like the joke images that he spread through the internet, right? But it still feeds into a lot of the same ideologies of like he is very very clearly talking about fake news and he's very clearly talking about ideologies being formed through digitized information which is clearly pointing toward the internet and clearly to uh, pointing toward like the way we sp the way we spread information in modern days right and like you take that and you combine it with the way we do use memes the way that memes have in have clearly influenced like the way that we think about the world and our imp our opinions and our politics like all the connections are there, and he's saying it very like the way he's conveying it in this game is very clear and really prophetic. I would say personally, I, I'm pretty sure they do use the word meme 
in the game. At this yeah. point, chat, mm -hmm. stop arguing about it. Just, just yeah. stop. It doesn't and matter. Also, <laughs> and also, Kojima actively came out and said the theme of the game is meme. Um, okay. That was the, he said meme and then Metal Gear Solid 3 is jeans. So it's, it's what's a, Wait, it's what's the note. theme of the first one? Uh, I don't think they had. I can't remember. What they that. I think they retroactively gave it one, but I can't mm, remember. Okay. To They're kind of fit it uh, into MGS One is Gene, MGS Two is Meme, and MGS Three is Scene. Meme Scene. Okay, yeah, that's that's how it goes. Mm. Alrighty. Well, I've at least had some food. So this Ain't this barret, nice. um, it is a bit of a slow fight. Yeah. Um. It is a bit of a grind. I think I am starting to recognize when he's vulnerable to. Yeah. Because I'm. I'm gonna be real. I'm not trying to kill this man. Because oh, he, he is trying to. He is. He is like... trying to like fuck up the system in a way. Mm. That I'm like, all right, all right. Maybe if we like, ch like maybe once we have this fight, and like maybe if you live and you chill out for a little bit, maybe we can team up. Fuck the system up a little bit more. You know what I'm saying, Mike? Mm. And team up. So I'm, not trying to, I'm not trying to kill this man. Just trying to yeah. wear him down. The horizontal slashes are a little better than the poke. Yeah, I know. I, I, even when I have it on the blue blade, which I thought mm. was like specifically for stamina, um, mm. even when I do the poke, it's like, nope, that takes out uh, actual health. So, yeah, I got to do the swipes. I think I'm starting to recognize when those swipes are vulnerable yeah. or when he's vulnerable to those. So we'll, we'll, uh, we'll see how that goes. Cool. Right now we're close to do, going 45 extra. We'll see if I can actually uh, beat this. <laughs> we're at Where 20 we minutes at until yeah. We're at 20 minutes until two hours, and so okay. we we have roughly an hour left. Yep, 50 minutes left. Okay. Or actually, like we're still at only 30 minutes extra, so we're uh, a little less than an hour left. All right, y'all. Y'all know the deal. We can fill up this bar. We can go for an hour and twenty minutes starting right now. If not, we have about fifty minutes left on the stream. Let's fill up that bar. Let's have some fun and let's crush Metal Gear Solid Two, y'all. Thank you, Big Boss Wall. You're incredible. Is that the best you can do? Yes. What's wrong with you? There we go. Yeah, you gotta kind of be aggressive with it. This music's pretty badass. Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh. What's wrong with you? Big swipe. Prime gaming stuff for 66 months. Thank you, Get Busy. European what, Extreme Difficulty one Run When. Sam, what the heck does that mean? There's an incredibly difficult version of the game. That okay. Is like okay. Only exclusive to the European version of the game. Because Say what? People were like, American gamers are weak, so we gotta put uh, the European game is nowhere as that. So they gave us the hardest version of the game. That was for you, Hunt Sam. That was they made that yeah, for you. Me. I made that shit look easy. <laughs> How difficult are we talking? Like suit like insanely difficult and cha challenging? Yeah, very very limited rations and um, I think you let me double check this, but I think there's like a 
and it's a bunch of fail states that are like ridiculous. There we go. Thank there you we go. to Boars and Double O for the thousand bits as well. This is my favorite of the whole MGS series. Oh, oh! wow, okay. Needs a full hour to talk about it all. We will definitely talk about it all at the end, and then we'll reveal what's going to go down with Metal Gear Solid 3. I think you all will be in for a treat on that one. Yeah, so European extremists, there's no rations, and the game's over when you get seen. No. What? Yeah. That's insane, Tam. Uh-oh. Oh fuck! All right. He's gonna buff up. Yeah, he's gonna buff up. Oh, he's, he's he still hasn't buffed up yet, right? I just wonder where some. Oh shit! Oh, oh we gotta take a call in the middle of this. You're insane. Love it. Also, at the end, I think you have to be five like thirty, fight like thirty rays. Yeah, I saw that in the chat. Someone was like, it's like twenty-five or something like that. Yes, you are. But mere weapons, no different from fighter jets or tanks. What the? The old model destroyed four years ago was Rex. The new amphibious model is Ray. Both of these are the same as the code names used by the U.S. Armed Forces to refer to Japanese warplanes during World War II. Your code name, Raiden 2, comes from the Japanese Navy's name for one of its interceptors. Stop it. I'm not a weapon. Oh, really? Do you know the code name the U.S. Armed Forces used for the Japanese fighter, Raiden? It was Jack. Both of you are just weapons to be used and thrown away. Just weapons to be used on the battlefield. Just pawns in a game. Exactly as you said. And a weapon has no right to think for itself. Now, it's time to fulfill your purpose. Defeat Solidus. Oh, I'm on fire! I'm on fire! Oh, we made that whole call of in engulfed in flames. In Oh, fuck you, dude. Here, just think. This came out three years after Donkey Kong 64. That's wild. <laughs> Woo! Fuck you! Oh! Oh! Like three three years ago, we got caught oh! before 2018. Like think, think about that jump. Just think about that, everybody. And this this game is almost as good as Donkey Kong 64. Oh, I'm on fire again. No! God damn it! With the fucking camera angles, dude. Oh, this sucks. Hey Barry, I don't remember liking this fight. Yeah, it's not a particularly great fight. Jason, thank you for the tier one stuff for the first time. Welcome in. Oh! Thank you for your support. So Solidus is getting wild right now. Fuck you. This, this, this is one of those boss fights where I like what the boss fight represents more than the actual gameplay itself. Fuck you, man. Oh, dang, he puts you in the triangle, bro. Triangle of fire. Yeah. Alright, he needs to have a better tell when What's he's wrong with you. Oh. The elbow. The elbow. Oh, nice. Oh, he put the Z down like Zoro. That's dope. Oh. Let's go. Oh. Ah. 
try, Bear. Yeah. Good try, Bear. It will be much quicker to get in there now. The first time is like uh, real weird. You're just kind of feeling them out, but you have a good, much quicker time. That was pretty good. Yeah, let's start from the fucking snake things again. Are we starting from the beginning? All right, big yeah. dog. Here we go. Scared of you, Barrett. Look at him. You don't want it. You don't want it. You don't want that smoke. Oh! Good work, Jack. But this is where it gets interesting. Record time. Nailed it. Easy clap. For sure. Got him. No, oh, we were trying not to kill him, right? Oh my god. So much blood spewing out of his back. Trying to keep him alive, Mikey. Right on George. Oh Washington, shit! Though. Is he still alive? <sighs> I 
I'm back. I see that Barrett did it. Congratulations, Barrett. Now all these people- wait, what the fuck? Who am I really? No one quite knows who or what they are. The memories you have and the role you were assigned are burdens you had to carry. It doesn't matter if they were real or not, that's never the point. What's just There's going no on such there? thing in the world as absolute reality. Most of what they call real is actually fiction. What you think you see is only as real as your brain tells you it is. Then, what am I supposed to believe in? What am I going to leave behind when I'm through? We can tell other people about having faith. What we had faith in. All right, you can what zoom in and out enough to when they're for. talking. Not in it's this not bit, in the next you were bit. Right or wrong, but how much faith you were willing to have. Keep your eye on that, that button. The future. Keep your finger on that button. The Patriots are a kind of ongoing fiction too, come to think of it. Mm -hmm. Listen, don't obsess over words so much. Find the meaning behind the words, then decide. You can find your own name. And your own future. Decide for myself? And whatever you choose will be you. I don't know if I can. I know you didn't have much in terms of choices this time. But everything you felt, thought about during this mission is yours. And what you decide to do with them is your choice. You mean start over? Yeah, a clean slate, a new name, new memories. Hmm. Choose your own legacy. It's for you to decide. It's up to you. Get that trigger ready. By the way, what is that? Dog tags. Ah! Just keep zooming now and look around. Anyone you know? No. Never heard the name before. Can, you can move around as well. Yeah, do it now. I'll pick my now. own name and my own life. Oh! I'll find something worth passing on. They taught me some good things, too. I know. We've inherited freedom from all those who fought for it. We all have the freedom to spread the word, even me. Snake, what about Olga's child? Don't worry. I'll find him. Count on it. As long as you keep yourself alive, he's safe. Everybody in chat is blown away by, right now, by the way. Do you know where Liquid went? By what? I put a transmitter on his Man, rig. Thing. Did he head for the oh, Patriots? Okay. Yeah, but I have a feeling they gave Ocelot a bogus location to begin with. They're supposed to get an achievement for it, but I don't know why they should. Cheer up. We have a better lead. This contains the list of all the Patriots. But Ocelot took it. The one we gave you wasn't the real thing. Damn. What? This virus is coded to destroy only a specific part of GW, namely the information about the Patriots' identity. 
Which means that there's a parameter coded in here that defines what that information is. Mike, if you want to put it back on your load only. Analyze the code and you can probably find out where they operate. Count me in. No, you have things to do first. And that was badass. To to. Snake is so cool, man. He's so fucking cool. There's no one cooler in video games than Snake. Sorry, Master Chief. I'm sorry, Mike. Sorry, Mike. <laughs> Mike, you're muted, by the way, so. My God! Wow! Wow! <laughs> Bro, I thought she was part of an AI or whatever. You never know nowadays with fake information. What's real? What is? She's isn't. literally standing right in front of him. You ever heard of deep fakes? You can't do that IRL. Oh shit! Snake's gone. You ever heard of these voice applications before? Oh are using damn! Nowadays? What's wrong? Honestly, this game is probably what freaked me out when it came to the voice, the um, like Can I replicating. Ask you something? Who am I really? I wouldn't know. But we're going to find out together, aren't we? Oh. Yeah. See me for what I am, okay? I know. Wait, is she actually pregnant? She said she was pregnant when, the, like, the her and Campbell were broken in the system or whatever. Do you remember this place? Of course. This is where we first met. I remember now. Today is the day I met you. <laughs> That's it. So that Rose was an AI. This was Rose who was held hostage. I think I found something to pass along to the future. What? He said all living things want their genes to live on. Are you talking about the baby? Yeah. The genes aren't the only thing you pass on. There are too many things that aren't written into our DNA. It's up to us to teach that to our children. What kind of things? About the environment, our ideas, our culture. I love this game so much. Poetry. It's so fucking good. Passion, it's so good. Sorrow. Joy. What video game ends with this kind we'll of We'll tell them everything together. Is that a proposal? This is for your ears only. It's free real estate. What a song this is. Some Persona 5 shit right here. Mm -hmm. Chilling in the cafe. How much uh, cutscene do we have left? This is it. This is done. Oh, it's done? Yeah, credits. All right, I gotta go get Lulu. I stare at the stars and the sky. Wow, guys. Oh my gosh. Right? That was terrific. That was really terrific. <laughs> I can't believe he built that first one and then went into this and was even deeper in the bag, bless, as we talked about. He was in the Duffy and yeah. created another hit. I mean, that Mike, was a ton of fun. Mike, the bag goes deeper. The bag just the bag continues to get deeper. deeper and deeper and deeper, deeper, Mike. That's yeah. the great thing about it. Like, here's the thing, right? We just played, we just finished this game. Yeah. Metal Gear Solid 3, I would say, is the fan favorite. Somehow yeah. this game isn't the fan favorite. This In fact, is, when this game came yeah. out, it was divisive. A lot of people didn't like this. This is the story that people now say is their favorite. Metal Gear Solid 3 has okay. the story that came out and everyone went, this is one of the best video game stories ever. Wow. Wow.
Yeah. I mean, I do say, I, I will say wild. personally, I think this is probably the smartest Metal Gear Solid story. I think, you know, like, it, we, we talk a lot about Kojima being prophetic and all this stuff, whether or not, like, he's just very well read and socially aware, or whether or not he falls into that shit. Either way, I'd say this game is very smart about how it pulls together its narrative yeah. and how, like, when we talk about when we talk about the themes being false information and fake news and all that stuff, right? Like, even the marketing of the game falls back into that because we talk about how before playing this game, we watched the long trailer of all the gameplay of Snake yes. going through the tanker yes. and doing all that stuff. That itself was misinformation. That itself was feeding into the to the narrative and the themes of what this game is. And this game is so smart about doubling down about um you know being about a lot of these i'd say future looking uh uh things right these, a lot of subject matter that is prophetic in a lot of ways that said i think going into the next game when people talk about that game being one, one of their favorites in terms of story and all that stuff i think that's because it hits both on the level of not only is it a really good story but also it hits on a, a lot of emotional levels that you know like i think you i look at uh barry and i think you might sometimes too when you look at characters like raiden and it's like all right, just gotta keep you hit, hit or miss. We don't love Rose. We don't love a lot of who, who these characters are. I think MGS3 is gonna have a lot of characters that you guys see and you go, oh, I dig this. Oh, I like where this is going. Oh, I like okay. I like the relationship between these characters. Like you're gonna have the, the emotional uh, um, identification with the character with, with the characters in a way in that game that you you probably didn't in this game. But you're yeah. still gonna have the dope ass writing as well. This which feel, this, for, guys for me, this had kind of an emotional disconnect. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure why. Um, there's still some great like moments, you know, there's the hype moment from last stream where, you know, they do the secret handshake, uh, you know, the, the one with the bird uh, saying I miss you and shit like that. Like there were some moments, but it felt like this was more focused on like plot. It, it, yeah, and it, it's more about like the the themes, I would say, of the of the story rather yeah. than like the care That's like the specific like character yeah so the strength of this stuff. game is yeah the strength of this game is it's the narrative the themes the things that it explores and the commentary the social commentary is trying to say for metal gear solid 3 it's characters and they are what drive the narrative more than in this game um by its very nature this game is a remake it's a remake of metal gear solid 1 in many ways that's kind of the theme uh, Tam, can you, can you restart Discord really quick? You're you're getting all Campbell on me right now, and it's freaking me out. Okay, one sec. Sorry. You should be coming back in a second here. I think we're, we're probably good to take it off uh, emote only mode. I think there is a post credits, but I'm sure. Yeah, I figured cool. there would be. How's that? You sound great. You sound great. Yeah, so what I was saying was, how much did you hear of that? Uh, so what I was saying was, yeah. uh, this the, the strength of this game is like the the uh, social commentary it's having. Yeah, yeah. And um, the themes that it explores. And the strength of Metal Gear Solid 3 is the characters and how they drive the narrative. There's still an underpinning message in that, which is like very, very poignant. But it uses more, um, it uses the people and the figures to drive that forward. Whereas this uses themes, social commentary, and ideas a little more to push push it forward. And if you think about it, like this game is a remake of the first game in in many ways. It's in there thematically as the S3 project as it's mm. first presented to you. But think about well, everything you did in this game has a parallel in Metal Gear Solid One, from the entry point to the ending. Everything is a remake version of MGS One Shadow Moses experience huh. like pick any moment and it's and there's an uh, there's an equivalent in shadow moses um yeah we had like the tor like there's obvious ones like the torture sequence yep we fat were, man we were literally in the like it looks like the same exact room uh from yeah. metal gear one you're fighting fat man he's a character that's constantly moving in a in an area full of bombs that's uh, the ocelot fight mm, yeah you yeah, know what yeah. i'm saying um you fight uh the sniper sequence where you're mm. shooting the guns and you have to shoot vamp that's the stand-in for sniper wolf you need a sniper section to like replicate everything <laughs> so every single thing in this game has a parallel to mgs1 and and they and they pretty much said that right they're like we we yeah. were doing this to like recreate 
the simulation of Shadow Moses. Exactly. Okay. Um, and the next game is more of a break away from that. So the next game is is a fresh start for another story, which is amazing. Like it's a it's a really incredible journey. The next one, <laughs> um, yeah. I love this credit song. Yeah, that's where you're really gonna be like, oh shit, S Snake is an all time great character. Yeah, like they do. I love I love this game too because I think they do such a good job of building up the legend of Snake. And the series as a whole tries to build up its main character, right, as being like this dude who's like this legendary soldier. And, you know, this game is all about how Raiden is trying to live up, live up to that legacy or trying to replicate that legacy to some extent. And I would say the next few games do a good job of building into that more. Like, I guess the whole franchise as a whole kind of builds into that thing. But, yeah, by the time you get to the next game, next game like, I think you guys are really going to enjoy Snake's character even more. Mm -hmm. All right, Mikey. Is it time to is it time to rank things? Where are you at? Where are you, where are you feeling? You're still muted for me, by the way. Yeah. Uh, where's this post credit scene? It's about to pop up. Oh right yeah, you're right, you're right. You're right. Rankings. Because it's about to go down. Life isn't just about passing on your genes we can leave behind much more than just DNA. <laughs> Through speech, music, literature, and movies, what we've seen, heard, felt, anger, joy, and sorrow. These are the things I will pass on. That's what I live for. There's another post-credit after. We need to pass the torch. Post post credit. And let our children mm -hmm. read our messy and sad history by its light. We have all the magic of the digital age to do that with. The human race will probably come to an end sometime, and new species may rule over this planet. Earth may not be forever, but we still have the responsibility to leave what traces of life we can. Building the future and keeping the past alive are one and the same thing. Face. God. God. Damn, that's a line right there. Bro, I'm about to tear up right now. That was a fucking moment right there. That was beautifully crafted. Snake, you there? It's me. I've finished going over that disc. Did you find the Patriots list? Of course. It contains the personal data of 12 people. There was a name on it. Snake, it was one of our biggest contributors. What's going on around here? I don't know. Anyway, where are they? Well, we were right about them being on Manhattan, but... But what? They're already dead. All 12 of them. When did it happen? Well, uh, about a hundred years ago. What the hell? Damn. What does Damn. that mean? Wait. What does okay. it mean? Okay. I'm wondering, because Mike, there's that like there's that amalgamation of whatever sentient being is living in the White House for 200 years. Uh huh. Uh -huh like, are uh -huh. they just the embodiment of the Patriots now, and they're they're the one running things? That's my guess. It's an interesting guess. That's an interesting one right there, Bear. It's very. It's interesting. I want to know with that information: Are we on the hunt? Are we on the chase for that into Metal Gear Solid Three? Will we completely? Go off on other some other tangent, maybe to go find Olga's son and save Olga's son. Yeah, Metal Gear Solid Three. Where the heck is Olga's son's at? You know what I mean. That could be what mm. we could be doing here. Mm. Uh, dang, I don't know. <clears throat> that was very interesting. Is he going to get a nickname here? Uh, he oh. should do. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Playtime: yeah, fourteen hours, nickname. forty-seven minutes. Okay. I saved thirty-nine times. Continued thirty. So I died thirty-seven times. Uh, went into alert mode. Got detected twenty times. Killed one hundred forty-four people. Uh, and, uh, had almost 50 rations used. There we go. Nice. Elephant. Codename Elephant. What does that Elephant. mean? What does okay, that mean? okay. What was his first one? Do we remember the first one? 
We got to write those down. Ooh, yeah. Was it bats? Point. Was it ocelot? No, was it ocelot? No. Oh, hyena? Was it hyena? Hyena. Yeah, it was hyena, hyena in the first one. Um, hyena and elephant. Okay, people okay. who are asking about a Metal Gear Solid 3 trailer, uh, we talked about that right before we went live. Uh, we don't know if there's a good Metal Gear Solid 3 trailer that doesn't delve into spoilers. Yeah. Me and, me and Tim have been going back and forth. There's one that we brought up that uh, doesn't seem spoilerish. It's more gameplay focused, but mm -hmm. watching it, okay. I also don't know if it's that exciting. Watching gotcha. the trailer, Elephant mm. Metal Gear. Like it's, not, it's not. It's not high resolution, and it's just a lot of like. It's similar to the MGS2 one, but I think even less exciting. If I'm being gotcha. honest. Gotcha. Okay. And I also I think love like MGS3. MGS3 is one of those ones where. I, I think going into that game um, raw with like no prior knowledge of like yeah. what the setting is or what's going on is going to do a lot for you guys. Yeah, okay. I think so. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay. All right. I, I got the I got the code named name. Elephant for using Elephant. over thirty one rations. That's what that's how I got that name. Oh. Oh. Okay. Okay. I don't Not know bad. why I said going in raw. I meant going in blind. You guys want to be. No, you said going in raw. You stick by going in raw. <laughs> you okay. stick by that. You're right. I'm sticking by what I said. Yeah, all right. Going raw. We are raw dog in MGS3. All right? Raw dog in MGS3, baby. We are going to run a quick block of ads. So if you are subscribed here on Twitch.tv slash yeah, Games, love that. you will not have to watch ads. But if you aren't subscribed, think about subscribing. You don't have to watch ads. You get emotes and you get to hang out with us here on Twitch.tv slash Counter Funny Games with your support. You got a camera, you can use it in the tanker episode. Okay. That's pretty cool. Plant episode. I feel like, didn't I already pick up the digital camera somewhere like naturally in the game? Say that again? You cut off from me there. Did, uh, yeah, didn't you, I already pick up, naturally pick up a digital camera in the playthrough? Yeah, so, so like, what's the. Yeah. You didn't, that camera doesn't exist on the tanker. So it, it was saying, tanker. like, digital camera for both Tanker and the plant. Yeah, so n now you get it from the outset instead of waiting to collect it later. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I saw that you were ranked elephant. Yes. Did you guys look at what it, what that means? I just said it. it was, uh, I used oh, more sorry. than 31 rations. Whoa. Yeah. Hungry boy. Yeah, huh. do, you remember what you were do you remember what you were named? I, I'm going to be honest. Baby. I what? I think I was a fox. Double fox tan? Yeah. Really? Yep, I believe so. I think I was octopus, which I might be wrong about, and I can't. No, I, I might have been fox hound. It's either fox or fox hound. I can't remember what the de designation is in. Yeah, yeah but you also played a million times. What were your first time? Yeah, <laughs> oh, my first time was a nightmare. Yeah, right. First time was a nightmare. Yeah. Metal Gear ranking. All right, well, let's go around. Bear, yeah. let's talk about it right now. I mean, here we are at the end of Metal Gear Solid 2. We'll talk about Metal Gear Solid 3 later on, but what did you think about the experience as a whole? This whole package, what did you think? Um, I really enjoyed it. I, I, I thought it was cool to kind of see the evolution of moment-to-moment -moment gameplay from 1 to 2, um, mm -hmm. and in that aspect of just, like, just the core stealth stuff, I absolutely loved, um, and just, like, uh, you know, trank darting people, shooting people in the head, um, with a pistol 50 meters away, stuff like that. Like that gameplay was really, really fun this time around. And it was, it was cool to feel that right after finishing Metal Gear Solid one, which like feels like it was a little, uh, almost too ahead of its time of like what it was trying to do, how it controlled. I also played on PC with like weird, uh, map controls for an Xbox controller. So, um, yeah, that MGS3 it, uh, really MGS3 really expands on that stealth stuff that you like. So I'm okay, yeah. but... awesome. Um, as far as like uh, cool moments go, like it, it was all like we had a lot of fucking crazy twists in this game, Mike. That I was absolutely all for. I was I was excited to be there in the moment with all of y'all, just like experience things. Like you know, we're no longer playing as Snake. Uh, you know, we're playing as this riding dude. Uh, we've got this vamp guy who was shot in the head, and then he's alive a second later. Um, th this whole thing about, you know, this weird uh, sentient AI that lives in the White House that has been controlling and made this entire um, situation happen in, like, a simulation type of way. Fucking wild. And I'm still, like, not fully processing, like, how, like, why... 
what really happened. <laughs> um, but I, I, I thought the story was fun. I really dig the themes in, in this game that are introduced, I would say, in like the last kind of third um, that, are, that they really like uh, hammer in. Um, but with that, though, I think with the uh, going back to gameplay, I think with the how they expanded upon gameplay it also came to the detriment with some things that don't hold up super well playing in the moment. Um, a lot of boss fights, I, I would say, are fucking bullshit uh, nowadays. And I, I was running into a lot of frustrations, uh, as y'all have seen throughout some of these streams where I'm, I'm not having a fun time. Um, it felt like the vamp one was the only one where it looked like you weren't having a fan, fun time. Uh, obviously, I didn't watch this end. This uh, end. The, the, it, it, the solid, solid, the solid the snake yeah. sucks. That's a I bad mean, yeah, boss he fight. just yeah. beats the shit out of you, and yeah. it's like this isn't fun. All right, let me. I guess I'll do this for two days, and yeah. then I'll I'll win. Yeah, is that is vamp? Um, I would I would even say like uh, I like the idea of Fat Man. That was still like not like a that it felt like way too much going on all at once. Um, I can't even remember any other boss fights, honestly. The Harrier Jet. Oh, the Harrier Jet. Yeah, that was actually a cool... That was a great moment. That was a good sequence right there. Yeah, yeah I would... The, I would, rings, I would see, like, um, the Harrier Jet and, like, the um, Metal Gear Ray uh, fights were, like, definitely highlights on, like, boss fights. And I know we'll get into, like, villain ranking stuff in a second. Um, but this was... I think overall a, a really good time. I think I enjoy it more than the first one because I think it gets to expand on more ideas that the first one wasn't able to do. Uh, maybe some lower lows than the first one, but I think it also um, tries to reach and just like go into some weird new directions that I think it absolutely nailed at the same time. So mm. that's where I'm at with Metal Gear Solid 2. Hey, you said it so well. I feel so similar to you, man. I got to say... I'm impressed that this guy was able to create something so impressive after what we experienced with one, right? And I think that leads up to the legendary name that he is right now. Of course, this is my first experience with it. So like you and I are living it and now we'll see why he's so acclaimed, right? With all these video games. But I am so impressed with what he created and the, the twist and the turns, right? We had so much fun at the beginning with the awesome start of Snake jumping onto the tanker and being like, oh man, look at all these new crazy gameplay devices he's added in that we get to play with. And then the twist of like, oh no, I'm taking that all away from you and you're just gonna be this guy. And you're like, what the heck is this? And then Tam will tell you, I, you know, if we rewind last playthrough, I'm all about Raiden, right? At one mm -hmm. point I said, Raiden is better than Snake. He's the dude, right? But there's nobody better than Snake. Let's all no. be real with each other. When Snake finally became Snake and not Indica Jones and lived up to the <laughs> name and was the that man great. with the headband, that was a big moment and a big deal. And I think he played it so well of like, there we were, you know, 80% of the story all is riding and you're thinking, okay, what's going to happen? And then Snake comes back. We have the team up. But there were some really cool moments, right? I think I loved when you fought the Harrier Jets and you said it so well, like that was a cool moment. That's when Solid Snake showed up and then freaking Solid Snake was like, no, bro, you're not Snake. And like the crazy sequence that that was. And to go from there, right, you have Bomb Daddy and Fat Man, which were like so wild. What a crazy situation that was. And what a fun boss. Like who thinks of putting a boss on rollerblades with a glass of wine, drinking it out of a straw, and he's a bomb <laughs> expert. And like, that was really cool. I, I do feel a little bit that we didn't get the best out of Fortune. I think at the end, it was a cool little payoff there. But like, I think she was really built up in a way where I thought it was going to be way cooler. But yeah. you know what? I'll, I'll give Fortune. I, yeah, I, I feel cool. like they could have built up Fortune a little bit better. Cause there is mm -hmm. that one moment of payoff where, you know, she finally gets shot and she like finally gets what she wants of like being killed, being with her father, being with, uh, I think it implied her husband was also killed. Um, yes. Like that moment was great, but I feel like we could have also gotten more with her. Um, yeah. It, it felt like a little, a little bit of wasted mm -hmm. potential there. I love that dead cell as well of like these like scary people that like, are they vampires? Are they just some sort of scary group running around murdering people? I have no idea, but vamp was dope. And uh, I like that group. I like that. Like, like that vibe. There was so much going on on big shell, right? Of like, there was 
Snake. And at the beginning, we thought Snake was the bad guy. There were the Russians. There was the SEAL team. There was us. There was Dead Cell. There was Ocelot and Solid Snake. Like, there was a lot going on in this. And then the reveal that, oh, this just isn't some sort of water treatment plant. This is now housing what would be Metal Gear Arsenal. And, like, the idea of what Metal Gear Arsenal was going to be, how impactful it would be. Now it's got a whole, like gigantic group of Metal Gear Rays that's going to protect it along with these warheads. There was so much building up to it. And then to hear Ocelot, Ocelot, I can't wait to learn more about him or go on this ride because this dude, he's the man with his finger on the <laughs> pulse, right? He's the dude that knows all the other stuff that the dudes don't know, right? Because he's like, but, oh, I got you. And she's like, what do you mean you got? He's like, I got you, you know? It's but then, and now it seems like maybe Liquid has fully taken over Ocelot at this point. And that too, Bear. And like, like what this the is the other confusing thing that? of like he's working for the Patriots, but now apparently the Patriots have been dead for a hundred years. <laughs> um, and so yeah, and so like the question I have is like, oh, or maybe we can talk about this off off air. Um, yeah, it felt like there was so much plot added ad, uh, added at the end, where I felt like I was like. Okay, I think I'm picking out the themes here. I'm getting lost in the sauce a little bit of, like, what's going on. Like, it's almost getting too absurd to really follow. Uh, and I know that's, like, been kind of the meme of, like, uh, people comparing Metal Gear to Kingdom Hearts and stuff like that. Um, and uh, Tim kind of... Uh, I, I remember Tim saying that was bullshit a couple weeks back uh, and saying, like, Metal Gear has, like, this really well thought out, not, like, not actually convoluted thing. I think it did get a little convoluted in this game. I'm, I'm going to admit that, so... Mm. Nowhere okay. near Kingdom okay. Hearts, though. Yeah, nowhere oh, near Kingdom oh, Hearts. I'll oh, fight. I'll oh. fight the Kingdom Hearts comparison. Yeah, right yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I also, before we let the two experts jump in, just coming high off of that, like it was so much fun, and to see all these new characters have some callbacks of characters was really, really well done and really cool. And yeah, I I felt like I had the story nailed for eighty five percent of the time until, like you said, right at the end, bear, where it's like, here's a bunch get with it because it's going to just spiral out of control. And so I feel like I do need a recap from Tam and Blessing and Kevin of like, pull me back so I know where we're going or where we were. But like, I had a good grasp of that story the whole time and was loving the ride we were on. And yeah, I mean, what's up with this dude in the arm, right? Is he liquid? Is he ocelot? What's going on? I love that weird dynamic of right from the start, we saw, oh, my arm, it's taken over me. And then we knew he's still with him. And it's just like, this is wild to see. And I'm loving it. I'm loving every moment of it. Metal Gear Ray was super cool. Cooler than Rex. Um, and I, is there more? Like, are there going to be more Metal Gears? I don't know. I, I assume we're going to fight a Metal Gear each game, Mike. I, that's what I Every assume. single game, y'all? Yeah, dude. I think what that's if we gotta... go next game and there's no Metal Gear, Bear? Will you be Whoa. mad? If we go, no, there's no robots. I don't all. know if I would be mad. I think I'd be like, okay, that's a cool, that's a cool little twist. Kind of like when they did Uncharted 3 where it was like the twist was there was no twist kind of situation, <laughs> you know? No um, twist, no twist. Uh-huh, okay. And, and so with that, I think, what, what do we have? To, we, have the, we have to rank bosses, we have to rank Metal Gears, and then we have to rank the games. Yep, I'm ready for whatever. Now, do we want to have these? Let's ask these two really quick before we get into the rankings. Let's start with Bless and Tam. Guys, this is like, you know, your second time, your seventh time, your 15th time replaying this. What did you guys think now that we come out of it? Where did, where did you feel the story still holds up? Where does it not? How are your thoughts now afterwards? I'll start with you, Bless. Yeah, I can't believe coming back to this game after not playing it for over a decade now and seeing how well it's aged. Like, it's it's fun because I, I coming into it this time, I was aware of a lot of the themes. And I've seen clips, right? Even though I've not replayed Metal Gear Solid 2, I've gone on YouTube and rewatched certain moments because certain things would pop up. And I'm like, man, I feel like that that reminds me of this scene in Metal Gear Solid 2. And I'd go back and I'd watch cutscenes and be like, oh, yeah, oh, shit. This is really, like, this is really still relevant. It's always fun to actually experience the game in a whole from the get-go, from the tanker all the way up to the end, and really get the full picture of, oh, yeah, I see exactly what he was building here. Like, being able to re-experience that has been such a fun thing. I've been, I, I think I like the game even more now than I did before, and I think that's a testament to how well-crafted it is from, you know, I, like, I, of course, didn't have my hand on the sticks, so I can't speak to gameplay as well as, as uh, Barrett is here, and I've, I, watching Barrett struggle through some of the things, right, I think makes a lot of sense for this game as a 2001 game, but talking about the writing, talking about the characters, talking about the, uh, like, the industrial design, I think, of the, of Big Shell and just, how well that him and the team are able to convey really cool, really interesting, really unique 
um uh building design i'm still such a fan of um but then the the soundtrack being something that stood out to me in this game which is something i didn't really think about too much in my first playthrough of this game the soundtrack to this game is phenomenal and now stands is one of my more favorite soundtracks of all time right like that is that is easily creeped into my top 20 maybe top 10 if i really sit down and think about it um metal gear solid 3 of course also has a dope soundtrack and so when we get there we'll see how that soundtrack compares to this one but man it's been so fun watching you guys go back through it and you know you mentioned it being convoluted and i think that i think that is accurate for what this game is you know this is this being a game about again fake news and misinformation and what uh digitized information is going to do to the world and i guess the, the legacy of the world i think it being convoluted and it being confusing makes sense in that aspect uh i will say the future games pull back a little bit on being that convoluted but then kind of circle back around to being convoluted again and so you know look for look forward to it keeping that same energy for mike and mike and barrett um but yeah no i i i adored going on this ride with you guys i can't wait for the future quick tam before you jump in mm -hmm. i want to piggyback off of what bless said bless it was so cool to see what we came from with metal gear solid one where you brought up the design and what they created and how like we didn't really see any sunshine it wasn't bright it wasn't quite colorful it was Alaska, it was dull indoor factory settings. And I loved that vibe at the beginning of being in the tanker on a rainy night. And it felt like, oh, we might go back to that kind of same color pa palette and then immediately switching, right? Then it was like a lot of bright tans and orange and red and sunshine. And it was like, man, this is so different. And it's still so well done and it fits the theme. It feels the theme of going inside, outside. And I loved that. I loved that feeling. and what we saw there that was really cool to me as well tam what'd you think yeah i mean uh i don't think it's any secret uh that i think this game is one of the best of all time um i think every entry in this franchise is easily a uh, contender for in uh, the list of best games of all time but Whoa. like uh 20, 20 2001 like that was a big year for games in a lot of ways. And it was also a year when, you know, developers started to try to tell more complicated, nuanced or engaging stories. You know, that was the year we got GTA 3. Um, I wouldn't say narrative is the strongest point, but it's still narrative was a core part of it. Characterization was a core part of it. We got Halo, again, a story that um, a game that was... Its gameplay was leagues better than its story, but its story had a lot of you know value to it, and people loved it. Um, there was you know Devil May Cry, Final Fantasy X, a lot of story-focused games, and um, a few like Oracle Seasons came out around then. There was a few other games. I think uh, Eco was around then as well. Yeah. So this was uh, this was like uh, developers taking baby steps into telling stories in a in a different way telling more meaningful stories that connect with people and do it while they were taking baby steps my man kojima was sprinting like this man is sprinting and heard doing hurdles this man is jumping chasms and he's just go they are just going for it over there like what other game tackles these kind of themes and has this kind of messages um it is ridiculously it is ridiculous how high they aimed for it narratively speaking and how much of it lands and because they did it that way it makes the game stand up to the test of time you can play it like you guys did today and be like this this is absolutely based like this is got like inf it's got like commentary on fake news the the it's got commentary on the way uh uh censorship works global warming the value and then that down to like personal identity ideas and what it means to you know uh leave something of importance behind why you should think about what you're leaving behind and the reason that they can say all that now is because they tried back then and they did it knowing that they everything might not land it's like f just firing into the sky so that one day that that whatever whatever it is just land somewhere far off in the future and someone can appreciate it that's exactly what they did and it and not only did they do that, they backed it up with some of the most innovative gameplay that had been in an action game at the time. This stuff looks ordinary now, but you felt it when you moved from MGS1 to MGS2. Imagine that feeling that you got from MGS1 to MGS2, but apply that feeling to every other game. Like you, I, we, I was looking oh, yeah. at every other game and being like, 
what are you guys doing? Because Metal Gear 2 here is just just running away with it. Like this is this is what you call gameplay. And meanwhile, other games were kind of enjoyable and engaging, but caught in their own. They were trapped in time almost. They were felt like they were wearing like heavy weights and they were trying to get away from their history and still all caught up in old design thinking. This is a game that like pushes it on every single conceivable um, frontier and nails a lot of it. It's got its issues here and there. The boss fights aren't the best, but the one thing you can say about this franchise is it takes risks. It looks at what it does be- did badly before and tries to do it better. And then it also goes wild with it. It doesn't always land. The one thing you can say about this franchise, start to finish, it is they never take the ordinary route. They'll never oh, yeah. sit back. They'll never sit back and just be like, this is the trend, we do it. Or this is the safe thing, we do it. They will do the most ridiculous thing, the most risky thing, every single time. And that is why it's one of the best franchises of all time. It will always keep you guessing. It will always keep you on your toll, toes. And it will always, whether you like the games or not, you will respect them and you will think about them because that's the kind of games they are. Legend yeah, of thing. Kojima builds, Tam. That's how it feels right now. It's like we're building up this myth, this legend, this just incredible person and his team with what they're building. And it's true, right? It feels like that after one into mm. two. You can see it. You can feel it. We're playing it live. Oh, sorry. Bless you. <laughs> it's oh, just that. fun. Me and the dogs are going crazy in this house. We're going crazy. Oh, okay. I thought Kevin sneezed. I was like, Kevin, are you okay? <laughs> Kevin, Kevin playing with the robot arm that might be why too. that might be why gotcha. um but i mean i to to piggyback off of that right because i think tam made the beautiful point of like what this game was doing at the time and what was coming out around it and earlier during the stream you know jokingly i mentioned that this game came out three years after dk64 but like for real though this game came out three years after dk64 and uh, like other games of that era right metal gear solid was three years before this game and the jump between that game and this game is absolutely insane in terms of everything everything that they went for and a, a, one thing I want to shout out in terms of this game's message is not only how forward looking it was, but also how like honest, like br- how how brutally honest and open it was about the topics that it was tackling and the message that it wanted to convey, but also how uplifting it was. Because I feel like so mm-hmm. often those things are those things are treated as the, as if they have to be separate. If you're going to be honest about society, if you're going to be taking a deep analytical look about the world around you, that means you have to be uh, nihilistic. That means you have to be negative. But there are so many messages, especially at post credits toward the end, of Snake and Raiden talking about what are we, what are we leaving behind in this world, right? Like, what impact are you going to have for your children? What impact are you going to have for the world after you? Like, how are we going to keep the history of this world alive so that you can use that to build a better future? And so much of that is so uplifting and so so good at reflecting on the reality of things right like you you have those calls with colonel campbell or, or the the ar whatever you want to call it right you have those calls and they go to a freaky weird place they go to like such a like unsettling place you know in terms of not only the tone of of what's being said but the actual facts of what's being said but they take that and they flip it into a next step in a way that i feel like not enough uh analytical media does and i think this game again does that with grace i think tam spat it well um but yeah like this game is so special dude i'm i'm like so happy to get to re-experience it with you guys because it's it's fucking dope it's dope and with that twitch chat of course we want to hear from you you're experiencing this live with me tam blessing and of course barrett playing on our first time ever so let us know what you thought of metal gear solid 2 right now in the twitch chat and of course in the comments down below because we're going to get into the rankings and then at the end i want to read some of your comments i want to know what you thought Metal Gear Solid 2. So, Barrett, we have three different rankings, I believe. The Metal Gears, the Villains, and, of course, the game. What do you want to start with first? All right, so do we remember... Let's start with the Villains. I think we should go Villains, start with the Metal villains. Gear, and then the game as a whole. Like um, do you have the list for the first game? <laughs> I do. I can pull okay, it up sweet. right now. So I remember Kevin saying, why do you keep sending me the villains list? And I said, Kevin, it's for Ragu Bagu. <laughs> Ragu. Biggity Bagu. Bagu. There we go. Okay. So the list for Rad Guys Talk Bad Guys Metal Gear Solid 1 Edition. Barrett ranked the following. At 6, Revolver Ocelot. At 5, 
Vulcan Raven. Wait, hold on. At four. Okay, yes. sorry. You keep going, keep going. At four, Liquid Snake. At three, Cyborg Ninja. At two, Sniper Wolf. And at one, Psycho Mantis. I, on the other hand, ranked it a little bit differently. And Ben, I'll just send it to you via Slack so you have them easily for you. Thank you. I ranked them at the following. At number six, Vulcan Raven. Number five, Psycho Mantis. Number four, Revolver Ocelot. Number three, Cyborg Ninja. At number two, Sniper Wolf. And number one, Liquid Snake. So some big differences there between you and I, Baird, on what we liked and didn't like with these villains. Hmm. Yeah, hold on, sorry. That's all right. Now, are we going to add these right villains on top? Yeah, the that's how Raggy Baggy works, baby. Ooh, well, okay, but what happens? Y'all. What happens to Ocelot? Like, if, if you really like Ocelot, does he just go up in the ranks? Or do you, you add do MGS2 Ocelot? You add, you add MGS2 Ocelot. Yeah, MGS2 Ocelot. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Does Liquid count? Because he's technically in the game. Yeah. Oh, is that one character? I feel like he's an entity. I, like, no, I don't see, know if he's really a villain in the game. Yeah, here's know? the thing. It, it, in the same way that Ocelot's in here, I think you have to... It's, it's Ocelot slash Liquid. Going on with okay, you know. Okay, I think that's how I. That's how we have okay. to count it. Cause like, okay. you know, it's the same body. Same body. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I would agree that these two are blended together in this mm-hmm. one. So mm-hmm. it's a Ocelot, Metal Gear Solid two, but like the catch is he's got part of Liquid in him. So I would count them as one entity. Is correct. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Is how Google, I'm gonna Google look Docs is fucking odd one. Google today. Docs, they tweaking. They tweaking. Yeah, it is not doing well. Now, who do we got, uh, Tam, that we Yeah, we need a list. We need a list of... uh, So, we got Olga. All right, all right, all right, all right. right. We got um, Olga. Yep. Uh, You got Fat Man. Fat Man, okay, yeah. Uh, You've got... uh, What's in... um, The Harrier Jet. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You got Solidus. Uh, You got Vamp. You got... Uh, we're doing just villains, right? Just villains, yeah. Um, who was it? Uh, who am I we're not, we're, we're not counting President Gaspacho. No, no, G- Gaspacho. <laughs> President Gaspacho. Do we get Gaspacho? Fortune? Yeah, Fortune. Vamp. Um, we, so I said Vamp, right? Cool. Yep, Vamp, Vamp is in there that I got. Uh, it looks like another six villains uh, is what I count there. Uh, I think that's everyone. Okay. Yeah, I think that's all the members of Dead Cells. All right. Um, Mike, did you write that down somewhere? And you. Yeah, I did. Do you want it? So you have it? Uh, Yeah, can you select that to me? There you go. That's an um, updated one with uh, the minute. Okay. Oh, whoops. So that's while you're while you're doing that little fun fact, they had to cut out a scene where Arsenal gear crashes into the city. Okay, um, okay. That's why mm. that's why there's a hard cut to them falling onto the roof. Yeah, Instead like of it kind of came out of nowhere. I was like, huh, yeah, that's interesting. They, they cut that because of 9-11. Mm. Because, uh, oh, oh, really? Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, sounds like sounds like a good call. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Very good call. How process. interesting. Okay, and Tam, can you tell me like where in the development time that would have been and what that turnaround I time believe would have looked like? And then, so. yeah, you know, the game came out a couple of months after. It, it was yeah, like November It was very, very late. Very, very late. They had to do it. That's um, wild. Yeah, and it like, was like, I mean, yeah. this game came out, what, November 2001? Mm-hmm. Yeah. November ish. And so, yeah, not a lot of time. Especially when you consider back then when you, when, when you had a press. Hinting the game, uh, yeah. And. Go go and all that. Yeah, stuff. holy shit, that's wild. Yeah, yeah has no, like, he ever been asked about that, Tam? Has I he believe, ever spoken about that? That process. I believe there were there were interviews back then where he where he talked about it. But um, yeah, I think the the, the general um, kind of uh, his response to it was like out of respect, and obviously you know needs mm-hmm. needs to be done, which was like okay. Wow. That, yeah, I would love... That's wild to think about and all that. I wonder, is it just a straight-up cut, Tam? Like, he just was like, hey, delete this three minutes out of the game? Or what did that look like? You know yeah, I, I mean? believe... How, I how be- intensive? I believe they just did a straight, like, chop this part out, this scene out where it's visible. Um, in okay. the opening tanker sequence, they removed it from the background, which no doubt took a lot of time. Um, but in this bit, I think it was more elaborate because you 
there's a whole scene where it's like Arsenal gear is crashing into the city and the buildings are being toppled and that kind of stuff. Wow. And I think that would have taken a lot of rendering power. Whereas in the tanker ah. sequence, you can kind of cover it kind of like with the fog um, and almost like blend the building out um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. of the background. Um, so they just like chopped it out. That's, that's how I understand it anyway. There's a great question from the chat. So this didn't make it on disc at all. I mean, like, there's nobody with the disc on there with this scene. No, in there. I don't. I don't. I don't think that's the case. Oh damn! No. Wow! Wow! There's, okay. there's no restored version of it or anything like that. Um. Okay. All right. We've got. Let's see. Olga, <sighs> Fat Man, Fighter Jet, <laughs> Vamp, Solid as Snake, and Fortune. Uh, people are asking, should we add the Patriots in there? You can if you want. I feel like we should, Mike. They, they yeah. feel like the kind of big entity that's like pulling all the Wait, strings there. Are, are we not counting Ray at all? Or uh, the Metal Gear rankings are a different ranking, Kevin. Yeah, oh, they'll be nice you. rankings. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so let, let's talk about it. Give all right. A, what do you want to do first? You want to do Olga? Yeah. Do you want to do your for, uh, list first? Do you want oh, to I was over? just going to go one by one okay. with you and I. We okay, go yeah, we can go back one. and so forth. We can go back let's, and forth. Let's break it down. Let's talk about Olga. So uh, Olga, yeah. badass. She was pregnant. She was flipping. She was dipping. She's got a knife with a gun at the end of it. Yeah. Kind of badass. And a little plot twist, she turns out to kind of be good at the end because they got yeah, her baby. Did. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. like, you know, she's got to be kind of good. But she was pretty badass. Um, was she as badass as Sniper Wolf in my book? No. No, no, no. You know what I mean? Was she cooler than Cyborg Ninja? She technically wore the Cyborg Ninja suit. That's true. So she is Cyborg Ninja Ooh, almost. That's, that's kind of crazy. That's a good That's kind of crazy. Uh, oh, is she, shit. Is she better than Revolver Ocelot? Is she better than Psycho Mantis? I just noticed uh, the Hind D uh, isn't on that list. So the Hind, technically the Harry Jet shouldn't be on that yeah, oh, list. I that's think true. we cut the Hind D into Liquid Snake, you know what I mean? We just gave okay. him. Yeah, I guess, true. yeah. The Harry Jet counts as follow this as follow this thing. So here's what I'm gonna say to you to to you, Bear, right now. I, I'm ready to put my flag down and tell you where I think Olga goes. Okay, where are you put where are you gonna put Olga on your list? Okay, on my list right now, if you look at the four and five spot, Revolver Ocelot and Psycho Mantis. Yep. I know that's gonna break a lot of people's minds because all of you really love Psycho Mantis, but I'm gonna put Olga at the new five spot pushing Psycho Mantis down to the sixth spot for me. Wow. Wow. Yep. Wow. I I, I really like wow. Olga as a character. I think we got a lot of her story. We saw a lot of different sides of Olga. She had a pretty fun boss fight at the beginning. And then at the end, her kind of turn and need for help and what she had to do to save the baby and relying on Raiden. I actually liked a lot of that story compared to Psycho Mantis where we didn't get much of his backstory in number mm. one, right? We got a little piece of it. We kind of fought him. He had a cool little fight sequence inside of a tiny room and then he dies and we get a little bit. But we didn't get much of Psycho Mantis. So I'm going to put Olga over mm. Psycho Mantis mm. because of that. <clears throat> All right. Do you, do you remember Olga's surname? Gaspacho. Uh, Princess Gaspacho. It's Gaspacho. That's correct. Yeah. <laughs> Princess Gaspacho is correct. Yep. Yeah. Good, good. Um, I just wanted to check that you were paying attention, and it's clear you were. Yeah. I thought Tim was going to say Thank something you. like Olga Miller, and I'll be like, bro. <laughs> um, yeah, I, 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 looking at your list and like uh, how you how you take villains, I, I I understand that ranking. I like, oof. This might be a hot take. And you know, I give it, to, I, I, give it yeah. to us. I almost want to put Olga because she's kind of a villain, but then she helps. She's a very well-rounded character. I feel like in the like the villain list of like what she's doing, playing for herself, kind of stuff. Uh, her boss fight, I felt like was a really good tutorial boss fight, um, just to like kind of teach you of like the different things you can pay attention to while fighting enemies. Um, she did wear the cyborg ninja outfit. I think she was emotionally and plot wise a little more I think a better integrated into the story than um uh Frank uh, Jaeger. No, not uh, uh or yeah, Gray Frank Fox. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. And so like cuz Gray Fox kind of like comes in at oh. like moments but without the prior knowledge of Metal Gear 1 and 2, Mikey, like mm-hmm. we don't really have that emotional mm-hmm. significance. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Whereas Olga, like, her full story, as far as we understand, 
starts off with this game, right? Um, unless she's in Metal Gear 1 and 2 or, or for some reason. I'm going to put Olga at number three. I really liked Olga. I, I really yeah, like the pushing, kind of... Okay, you're pushing Cyborg Ninja. I think she is uh, a wow. better si version of Cyborg Ninja. You know what I'm saying? Okay, okay, oh. okay. That hurts me to my core. Good. That's uh Good. that's a push right there. Okay, I like that push. I love to see it. This is what I, uh, this is what it's about. This is what we're all about. So now let's keep it moving. Now we go to one of the stars of the show, which is Fat Man, who got me and Kevin deeply into blading. You know what I mean? We're blading <laughs> the states of San Francisco together right now while let's I'm down it. here, and it's just like this character was very interesting because. We had such a buildup to him, right? Baird of like Bomb Daddy, who we meet. He tells us the story of like, yo, there's a bunch of bombs all over here. And then plot twist, I actually taught the guy who put the bombs on the whole air in the whole area everything he knows, which is probably bad because I taught this guy, he turned out to be bad. And it's just like then you learn all about Dead Cell and each one of them and how they came together and like who they are. And then you look at Fat Man and it's just like this guy goes off the rails. He wants to blow everything up by himself, right? And then Fortune and Vamp are like, yo, you got to go check your dude. But then at the end, they were like, yo, we brought on Fat Man for a reason because we knew he'd go wild and he'd do all this. And it's like, there's a lot that goes into Fat Man and he's on rollerblades and he's drinking wine out of a glass and a straw. He's throwing bombs at you. He's grinding rails. He's running around. He even had a machine gun. There was a lot going into Fat Man. Where are you putting it, Mike? Tell me your yeah, thoughts on Fat Man for a minute while I, while I look at my number. Yeah. Uh, Remember, I, he, he taught you both. He taught you both to laugh and grow fat. That's true. He, I think presentation-wise and just like from an idea of who he is as a character, I think is really fun. Probably outside of, you know, everything is very weird and unique in this series. I think he is one of the more unique and just out uh, stand out kind of moments characters in the two games that we've played so far. Um, I do have the different point of view of uh, being on the six while fighting him, uh, which while not as frustrating as some of the other boss fights was definitely like uh, testing my patience a little bit. Um, but it was still like fascinating to like see him blade around and drink some wine and like plant bombs and then like look around and like, like shoot at me and stuff like that. Like there were, I'm at like, I, I have like a love hate relationship for fat man. I'll say, um, okay. I think, and th there's the other complicated part where it's like, I don't think we get, like, a lot of him, right? Where it's like, mm. we we get a lot, like, we hear a lot about him from, like, the, the dude who trained him and stuff like that. But he's not in, like, a lot of the story, like, at, like actually talking to him, learning about who he is. Um, and so it's like a weird push and pull of, uh, I think he's fascinating. We didn't get a lot of him, though. I will, The other thing, I, I do think it was clever of, like, the, the one bomb he had left was actually, like, inside him. And we had to, like, uh, you know, shake, shake him out. down. Yeah, yeah, yeah like that was that. really cool. I know. Are you ready for mine? I'm going to break the Yeah, where, right where, where's your ranking at? Where's your ranking at? Fat Man is going to be my new number three. He's going to be right behind Sniper Wolf. Okay. And right above Cyborg Ninja. Now, I think something special for me is, like, Sniper Wolf is held in such high regards because I think that story and that moment, the music, everything that was happening really builds her up so high. But, uh, man, Fat Man, like you said, was just a tonally different character than everything we've seen. I think this is when Kojima started to really stretch out, like, some wild characters. We saw Vulcan Raven in the first one. We kind of saw hints of, like, oh, maybe he'll, like, stretch out with Psycho Mantis and stuff. This one, I felt like when we get into Dead Cell, this guy mm. was like, here's the, a typical villain. I'm getting outside the back. I'm going weird. I'm going crazy. And yeah. Fat Man was our first, like, step into that. And it was like, oh, okay, like, this guy's going to put out some weird, like, some weird ones. This felt to me, Blessing and Tam, I don't know if you guys will identify with this, but for me, like, I think of the typical villain. And then, like, when I think of Dead Rising and what they did with the psychos and, like, how weird those villains got out, yeah. that's what it feels like here, where it's like, here's your typical, no, we're going the opposite way. And I like that about Fat Man a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to put him. Oof. I'm going to put him below Cyborg Ninja, so he's going to be my new number five. Um, I agree with, like, a lot of what you're saying uh, there, Mikey. I do, even though, like, I like Olga more than, like, the OG Cyborg Ninja, Cyborg Ninja was also really cool, and that was a really, like, interesting boss fight and stuff like that. Um, 
Yeah, I, I'd, I'd put him above uh, above Liquid Snake. Wow. Right there. The disrespect to Liquid Snake is unbelievable <laughs> from you, Baird. It's unbelievable, and I love it. Okay, okay. Uh, There's so just a, got... There were so many aspects with Liquid Snake, like, actually fighting the dude in the first game. Mm-hmm. Like, he was an interesting character. He had a lot of monologuing, but then, like, actually fighting the dude over and over and over again got frustrating over time, Like, Especially that right. last fight. Like, oh, oof. Oh. That was rough. Up next, Vamp, who was... And possibly still is a vampire. I'm not sure if he's a vampire. It's still not to this confirmed. Day. Yeah. It not not a even. Vampire. Not I even a no fucking clo- like. Not even a question. My new number nine. Number nine. Yeah. Are you putting him at the dead bot? Are you yeah. insane? Yeah. This he man really took hated. Bullets he in the really face. hated that he fight. He ran on water. Right? Mike. Yes, Mike. I need you to. I, I need to remind shadows. you, dude. I need to remind you that like at the end of that stream when Sweet beat Vamp, like I was like not not having a good time. That was like, I like I was I left that stream like in a pissed off mood. Like oh I was. My it was God. yeah. Mechan- like shadows, mechanically, he- like how bad that fucking fight is overtakes everything else about that character like it's so bad it's so bad mike wow okay i mean you are on the stick so you have a different one from a viewer and a watcher vamp is up there like vamp is somebody special in this vamp is a type I, of and like i'm interested like, to see, see where they go I'm, I'm interested to see where they go with him right like obviously he's still like mike i don't know if you noticed that like when tam was telling me to uh i couldn't like, see zoom. was he in that yeah that was he him? was in the background that's what Sam, uh, tam wanted me to zoom in on he's in the background still alive and shit after we killed him like four fucking times in this game like oh i'm that's interested to see he where he die. goes he's an interesting character he seems to like be similar to ocelot where he like might know a little more than he's giving off but just like again all of that like we haven't i don't feel like we've gotten to like the really cool parts with vamp maybe and just like everything we've gotten so far out of him does not overtake just how bullshit that boss fight is constantly going back and forth between like over the top perspective to first person perspective having a good rapport and then like the or a good pace of that fight and the last third of that fight turns into complete and utter bullshit um which yeah that's that's where I'm at. That's where I'm now, at. Now, I will say we're doing a disservice to our panel because we have two, we have three incredible experts here. So Kevin Blessing and Tam, I know we've taken this over. I would like for you all to probably start whipping up your own list just so we can kick it to you and always ask you because we have not brought you in. And I apologize for that. Just so no, you know. that's yeah. 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 For, for the future yeah. though, because we are going to run long on the stream and we yeah, still have yeah, a lot yeah. of things to, to rank. Right. I, I think yeah. you, you, your two rankings are what matter here. So no, I'm, I'm I, I agree with you. Unbelievable, I Barrett. I am uh, Barrett. I am shocked. I am shocked the disrespect you have put on this <laughs> man's name. Okay, he might be a vampire. This guy was super. Dope. I don't think it's a might. He's definitely a vampire. <laughs> no, it's unconfirmed. Be, unconfirmed. I, don't it's unconfirmed. I don't know. Nobody yeah, no knows. Way, no, vampire. no, no, no. Vampires aren't real, right? I'm gonna put down that vamp. Number three on my list. Over Ooh. Fat Man. He's wow. definitely top tier. He's going to be one of the best we've seen. We're going to talk about him to the end of days in the Metal Gear world. Kojima, great work on Vamp. I'm putting him up there. He's up on the tippy top. He's up there. Number three. That's fair. Okay. All right. Who we got next? Up next, the big boss. Solid, Solid Snake. Snake. He's really cool, dude. He's got a lot going on. Very complicated character. Very based in like what his ideals are for mm, you know like yeah. uh, like uh, true free will and all of this stuff. Bringing down uh, you know the the patriots and this weird AI that has lived in the White House. I still like. I really don't understand that part of the plot, and it's really bothering me. Um, all of this stuff, like it's a lot of like interesting back and forth of like his ideals and what he's trying to do mike i think this is it's easy like vamp where i know exactly where i want to put him i'm putting him he's my new number one number one yes i'm the perfect decision he oh man but liquid snake was pretty cool too but you're right this guy had a lot going on for him he did seem like the new big baddie and this big baddie very similar to liquid had a lot to say had a lot to stand for was doing certain things and i think that's another big you know one up for kojima and his crew of like creating another big baddie and it not falling flat on his face where you go man you did another great job you made somebody who is scary, is intimidating, but has a lot to say and like 
this weird social commentary that you're yeah. building up in this video game. And like Liquidus does hold up well. Like this man holds it together <laughs> well. It and I am impressed. So I will say I'm going to go with Solid as Snake, my new number one. Wow, there we wow. go. Um, right. you know and what? even he with his frustrating well. boss fight that I just went through, like mm -hmm. the uh, the other stuff about him overtakes that fight, and there is an interesting pace of that fight. Um, mm -hmm. th that like I, I feel like I was starting to get into the tune of, but um, Did, yeah, everything else about him was like super super cool. Didn't so have her. as great of hair as Liquid. Didn't have the ripped six pack, but could get buff at a moment's notice. Yeah, and the eye patch. Yeah, super dope. The Doc Ock arms, the double swords. Now we know where the eye patch comes from. Tam, uh, you're up. Well, Tam. Oh. oh. Go, no, go, no, no. go, Kev. What are we going to ask you? Uh, I just wanted to ask, do we ever get any more information about said eye patch? Uh, no. Bullshit. No, we don't no, know no, why no, he no. only has... A... Mike, give me an eye count. One eye. One eye. Currently. One eye. Uh, you, one you, eye. Will, you might understand a reason for him to wear that eye patch based on something that happens in a later game. Mm. Okay. Mm. okay, 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 okay. Um, Tim, what were you going to say to Bless? Or or no, I was going to say to Scratch Barrett, back, yeah. the White House thing is, is you're probably overthinking it, mm. but it's basically, imagine a bunch of people who thought they were real smart being in the White House, being like the smartest people in the world are at the White House, so therefore, uh, you know, we should build our new consciousness based on the stuff that is the minds that are conceiving in the White House. So in, in the actual game, he says the White House was our primordial soup, a base of evolution. So it's a bench, bunch of like rich, uh, smart asses thinking that they are the smartest in the world and then going, well, if any sort of AI exists, it's got to be based on the way we think. Does that make sense? No, but I'll just accept that. I might have to take some like I I I might have to do a like a lore video to explain that the, shit. The kind of yeah, the kind of ethos well, and ideology I, was like explored in the White House. Imagine it being like a I don't know one of those uh, college uh, frat style things where people talk to. Imagine an Illuminati forming in in in, in secret, and then everyone and them saying. Well, everyone needs to think like we do because we're the smartest. That's yeah, kind of yeah, I get that. But then, like, they're talking about, uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It is confusing. Okay. I, but also wait, you know. Okay. Yeah. Give yeah, it yeah, time. Yeah. <clears throat> um, okay. That that was a really great baddie. And then we're gonna finish it out. We have two more. We're gonna talk about right now. Let's round it out with Fortune. Now, Fortune Barrett. We we did speak about her right there at the end. I was really impressed at the beginning seeing this character. Her kind of like intro and lead up was really badass, something that was really scary. Then in the middle where it's like, I need you to kill me. Nobody will kill me. Do something, right? And like she was looking for Solid Snake to hopefully be the one to be able to kill her. Turns out, psych, plot twist, plot twist, plot psych. twist. It's like, oh snap, President Gaspacho and Ocelot <laughs> murdered your father on the tanker. We didn't know that. Now we know. Then he was like, oh, but I wanted you here because you were going to take Metal Gear Arsenal because I already knew that this was some jabroni stuff. I didn't need that. I'm bigger than this lady. And she's like, what? And then he's like, all your superpowers? Fake. You're nobody, right? And then you're like, oh, my God. She's a nobody. She could have been killed this whole time? No. She somehow summons her X-Men powers and stops those missiles from coming and hitting the crew. A lot going on with her. A lot going on, Barrett. What did you think? Uh, yeah, I, like we were saying earlier, there's a lot of cool setup. There was a lot of, like, almost the way they presented her. Um, it felt like there was this sense of, like, almost expectation of, like, where we might go with her. Um, some of the things landed at the end. I, I think other things didn't with, with her specifically. Um, if I, like, where we're at now with my ranking. Oof. Ooh, I don't know. What are you thinking, Mike? He's going to go think? number five for me. Under vamp, under vamp. We didn't have any boss fights with her, which was disappointing besides yes. the one where we hid behind boxes. Yep. That's a disappointment. But above Fat Man, I think Fat Man was a wild and crazy character. And like you could see, I have a block of all three of these. Dead Cell was really, really cool to put into this game. They were yep. all very unique. They were very different. They were that freaky deaky stuff like Psycho Mantis and Raven were from the first one. And I liked that, right? I like getting out of your bag and getting weird with it. And uh, Fortune for me was really, really cool. I, I am disappointed. 
disappointed uh, seeing parts of it. But you know what? I, I really liked this character. I thought she was really badass the whole time. I think in a similar vein, I'm going to put her under Cyborg Ninja above Fat Man. She's going to be my okay, new number okay. six. Um, because, yeah, like we we kind of had that one where we're hiding around hiding behind boxes and we essentially have to just like wait for that vamp cut scene to start. Um, but a lot of cool ideas. Uh, and like you said, the, the idea of dead cells is like really cool. And again, getting that reveal at the end of like, they, they had picked dead cells specifically cause they, um, were going to essentially represent, what was it? Um, the genome soldiers, right? Tam, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, um, yeah. from shadow Moses and all that stuff. Um, yeah, I thought I thought she was cool. I wish we had gotten like a full on like kind of boss fight or or, or something like with yeah. the snake and stuff like that. Um, so she's kind of like mm. she's in that upper kind of half of like being really interesting, but then also brought down a little bit because uh, I, I don't think they they did enough with her because maybe they didn't know what they fully wanted to do with her. I don't know. Okay, now. We have one that, you know what, Bear, we're going to have to talk about, and that's the Patriots, okay? The 12 wise men, the people running the whole world, the whole shenanigans. Here's an interesting one, Bear. I'm going to throw it out to you. Mm. I don't know if I'm ready to rank the Patriots quite yet. I don't know. Mm. Maybe I am. Maybe I'm But not. This, they're I, dead. Like, we're this, not going to ever see them again, I think. <laughs> are we? I don't know. See, that's the thing. It's like, is, is this the big overarching villain like Thanos, right? No, mm. we're working towards Thanos. Is it this person's time? How can to we be work ranked, towards right? something remember, when they're dead, bro? They're just an AI, they, I think. But they're, remember, they're a symbol. They're a message. Yeah, People believe in that. You know. Remember at the end of the game where they talked about there were measures being taken to remove the existence of the Patriots from information. Mm -hmm. Are they alive or are they dead? Or do they want you to think they're dead? But they're alive. Like this whole game is about taking information that they feel needs to be uh, delivered or altering information that they feel um, the society needs to know. So maybe they feel that society needs to think that they're dead. Think about it. Who knows? For me, I... I'm going to put them below Fat Men. I think thematically and like what like they're trying to go for um, is really interesting. And like it's just because we don't know a lot really about them else outside of just like the, the themes and like what they stand for about information and all that stuff. Um, I, I feel like we know them less and or, or more as an idea and less of like an actual entity. Um, so yeah, they're going to go a little lower for me, but still very interesting. So very interesting. Okay. okay. I got my eye on them and I don't want to rank them, but I will right now for just having fun with Ragu Bagu, and I will keep the motion to possibly move them if I need to. But mm. right now, if I'm going to go off of what they were that we just experienced, here's a shock to your system. I'm putting them below Olga. They're number 10 on my list. Olga, Ooh. way cooler than the Patriots, y'all. <laughs> Write it down and ship it, okay? That has been Ragu Bagu for Metal Gear Solid 2. Sons of Liberty. That's Ragu Bagu for Metal Gear Solid 1 and 2. That's our list. Of course, we're running late, so we'll hear Tam, Kevin, and Blessings on the next time around. But we have two more rankings to go, so let's slide right into that one. Let's rank the Metal Gear. I just want to say, uh, the absolute disrespect to Decoy Octopus on both those lists. Yeah, where the fuck is Decoy Octopus? <laughs> uh, come on, Octopus, like bro. honestly, like it's upsetting that that's even a character. It, they like just like, oh yeah, he he died he, while he in character. He didn't make it. <laughs> he didn't make like, it. Oh, right. Decoy that's Octopus. Fucking weird. I forgot that that was a fucking character. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he deserves any respect. No, he's in for is, he's in it for like a should be. Yeah. He's in it more than you like it, it, like uh, realize, but like he's really a character for like twenty seconds, and then you're like, Fortune. oh, he died a while ago though. Fortune is kind of the stand-in for his place where you don't really get to actively fight that boss. You just kind of but, know yeah. that they exist. But you do get do an a, you do get a yeah, fight. She's it's a little just, more. She yeah. just beats the shit out of you and, and like is this powerful character. And he's yeah. just some old dude that dies in front of you. <laughs> the guy <laughs> <dive laughs> <box laughs> works real fast for him. All right, okay, Mike. I, so right two. now our, our Metal Gear ranking goes as this. Number one, Metal Gear Rex. We've got two. Mm. Metal Gears to rank. We've got Metal Gear Ray, 
and Metal Gear Arsenal. Dang. I don't think I don't think didn't I, even think of that. I don't think Arsenal's technically a Metal Gear. It's called it, it's it called is Metal Gear. It's called Arsenal. It's called Arsenal Gear. So I, I think yeah, it it's is. Arsenal Gear. All right, Arsenal yeah. Gear. Yep, yep, is yep. Not I mean, Metal Arsenal Gear is a fortress, right? It has a number of Metal Gear rays within it. It has the yeah. capabilities of taking over the cybernetic network and mm-hmm. doing what it pleases with that. Running nations, running the world, choosing what goes in and out of the filter, which is the cyber world. I gotta say, Arsenal. Has a conversation piece here because ours might surprise <laughs> but you right I, I, but now. Real quick, real quick. The AI that's running it is called GW, and it's 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 its, it's own thing, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but still, like the concept, like of what like Arsenal can be used for, um, even mm. without GW, I think is like really fascinating and gets it's into that Star. Skynet. Uh, it's a Death Star, yeah, is what it yeah it's, is. A, it's a Death Star, around. but also like kind of Skynet yeah, at the same. Star. Yeah, ultimate is threat. It badass, right? It's my own personal Metal Gear Death and Dude, like, movie. you're in it for, or like, Metal half Gear the time, Inside and you don't even realize that, like, it is, like, a fucking, essentially but, yeah, a big-ass Metal Gear. That's, like, really cool. That's that's comparing a battleship to a tank, you know what I mean? Where it's, like, I, I don't know if a battleship can hold tanks, but, it, like, if it can't, it makes perfect sense. <laughs> Man, okay. I, like, I don't think we I mean, can, you know? It's hard to argue against that. Be- Barrett, where, do you want to do Arsenal first or Ray first? I think we got to go Ray first. Okay, let's let's keep. I think I think it's before the worst. I think it's I think it's obvious to put Ray above Rex. Where where how are you feeling? I don't know, bro. Really, I like like Rex a lot. Rays are mass produced. They're cheap. They're weak. They didn't have the cool internal cockpit where liquid was in, where you had to beat it down, open up the jaws, and then shoot it inside. I actually like. Rex more than Ray, so Ray will be my number two. Wow, Rex Ray. Mike, if number I if one. I could just say one thing, I am yep. pretty sure the Rays are like autonomously controlled, so they Correct. don't have a pilot. They don't and have a pilot. Like, no. that's, so like one person, like one bad guy, could be using three Rays at the same time. I know, but I want to be inside of it. It's like my own personal Gundam, Kevin. I think that's cooler, you know what I mean? Somebody's got to be inside. As long as you say it's not sexual, I'm fine with that. Not sexual. I also, like, again, being behind the controls, I thought the Metal Gear Ray fight was a a more fun fight than the Metal Gear Rex fight. I remember Mm -hmm. that fight being really frustrating. Um, While, like, interesting, I I, I just, like, the controls for that boss fight were definitely uh, not great. It's worth pointing out there are technically two types of rays there's the kind that ocelot has because he can get into the cockpit and mm. his one is oh, like it's, yeah. it's basically the the mold for the other rays mm. it's the it's the marine corps rays that so there's like it's rays. like the iron man and then the legion of like uh iron man bots that yeah. uh hammer creates in iron or, man 2 you know that's exactly or, or, or right in x-men you terms it. in x-men terms Droids. there's ma- there's master mold and then the sentinels so like the ones oh, that we fight are the Sentinels. Snap! Okay. It is true because he was in that Tam, and then because it can go in water as well, it was swimming. It was looking yeah. like Godzilla underneath the sea. That was pretty dope. That was pretty dope. And it had blue fire flames coming out of its mouth. That was pretty dope too. Mm-hmm. I'm still gonna stick. I'm gonna stick with Rex. I'm gonna stick right. with Rex, y'all. I'm gonna the stick dumbest thing Rex. I've ever heard. God damn I'm it! Sticking with Rex. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, where would you want to put Arsenal then? Now here's the catch. Why would I want one when I can have a whole fortress? You know what I mean? Oh, so, my <laughs> dear Arsenal, number one for me. Yeah. Oh, this flying ship. The thing could be underwater or it could fly, right? The thing was about to take off and fly. It has a bunch of Metal Gear rays inside of it. The capability of me having my own Metal Gear fortress, you'd have to be insane not to take that number one. So I'm putting it number one for me. I love this. I love putting Arsenal gear at number one. Mike, 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 Mike yeah, you and I, you and I, right now, were that handshake meme because I'm putting Arsenal gear also at yeah, number one, yeah, baby. Let's yeah. go! I, oh I yeah, like this now sets the bar for Metal Gears so high, where it's like, oh yeah, a big giant, basically turtle full of Metal Gears is is I, getting it, Arsenal I, Gear is a network. It's a network. Yeah, that's what makes no, it so that's cool. GW. That's GW. Yeah, it's just so they were like, how is GW? Huh? I feel like I feel like there there is scope in the future. I'm not saying whether there is another Metal Gear for you to know, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm, I mm-hmm. think there's cool things that could come up in the future that would very easily dethrone. 
any of these. Mm. Um, mm. Yeah, I'm Good. excited. I'm excited to see where uh, see you guys. Right. Yeah, see I'm where very curious go. to see huh? how you guys feel huh? about that stuff. All right, very last curious. thing we have series ranking. <clears throat> For me, this is the obvious number one so far. Metal Gear Solid Two: yeah, Sons, of, uh, yeah. Sons of Liberty. Um, I, I really like where, like the going back to the original, seeing where it kind of all started with the uh, quote unquote modern iteration of the series past Metal Gear One and Two. Um, some really cool ideas. Uh, really kind of weird characters uh, that stood out a lot, and I think 2 was just able to take everything a step further. Like I said earlier, might have been some lower lows in 2 than I would say in in 1. Uh, for me personally, just like uh, uh, gameplay levels with some of the boss fights and just some other moments like swimming around and, and shit like that. Um, but way more higher highs than I would say. Uh, than it, it was a, It's a full-on roller coaster uh, for Metal Gear Solid 2, and that's why it stands out to me a lot. Uh, again, liked a, a lot of the ideas and themes, especially introduced in the last third of it. Um, a, a lot of just, like, really getting into, like, the, the universe now and just, like, this whole, like, all right, we're in this, like, weird simulation that was created by this, like, AI thing to, like... I don't know, prove this whole idea that um, we can be easily manipulated and have no free will and stuff like that. Very interesting stuff. So, yeah, for me, it's the obvious number one. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's it's tough to beat the original, but somehow <laughs> Kojima did beat the original, right? He built on top mm -hmm. of everything we knew. Uh, you can look at it from a bunch of different aspects, right? Gameplay was elevated. There was a number of key features that were put into this that really took that gameplay to the next level. We talk about that with Blessing, right? Modernizing the controls, the gameplay. How does this guy grow and change up this game to really elevate it to be one of the best stealth games and best video games on the planet? And it looks like he hit all of that and it did seem like that, right? Story-wise, bang. You get Snake. You're feeling it as Snake. And all of a sudden, he takes it away from me. I'm a crying baby. I didn't know what to do. But then I fall in love with something new because he's building us all up to try new and different things within the bag and outside of the bag. And then he brings it back. Right? He gives me back what I wanted with our bro moments and all the guys that I like. I loved it. I think the villains continued to be cooler and cooler. The story is still blowing your mind, and that's why we're here. We're playing this game to have our minds freaking exploding due to some crazy story that this dude is making, and that's another banger Kojima joint right there. So it's got to be number one. It has to be. Uh, and you and I, yeah, you and I uh, shake hands. And so for now, our series ranking is just one list so far. We don't deviate. So there you go. Number one, Metal Gear Solid 2, Sons of Liberty. Number two, Metal Gear Solid now, of course, we got a few more games to go. We're not done with the series yet. Mike, do you want to tell the kids the plan for Metal Gear Ooh. Solid 3, I believe, is called Snake Eater? Ooh, now, Twitch chat, everybody watching live, and, of course, if you're watching the VOD over on YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Plays, let me know if you've been having a good time. Let us all know if you've enjoyed this ride with me and Barrett for our first-ever experience of this incredible franchise, this hit that Kojima and his team have created. If you've enjoyed the ride with our three experts, Fox Fox himself, Tam, of course, my guy blessing out of Yoye Jr., the future class of video games, and my best friend, Kevin. If you've enjoyed that, let us know live in the chat right now and in the comment section down below because it's because of your support we keep this thing going. So if you want it, we'll give it to you. And guess what? I think I figured out the perfect way to kick off Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater. If you all know... To the month of September here on Twitch. It's September, and that means you will get a discounted rate on gifted subs and first-time subs anywhere on the platform. So we thought, you know what, Kev? Let's go wild. Let's bring the energy. So next week, we're going to kick off Metal Gear Solid 3 with a bang. We're going to go for as long as you want it. Limitations and times apply because everybody has a life. Yeah, but we're, we're going to do as long it as you want. during a work day. Me and Barrett, Blessing, Tam, and Kevin will all sit down. We'll kick off Metal Gear Solid with you next week. And we're going to go as long as as you want it. So if we keep filling up that bar, we're going to keep playing it, and it's a perfect way to kick off Metal Gear Solid 3 because you know what? Tam, Blessing, Baird, and Kevin, every time we start these games, I think one thing in my mind. 
I don't ever want it to end because I love playing games with my friends. I love experiencing this new world in the video game world, and uh, we don't want it to stop. So guess what? If you want it, next week you can show up and let us know that you want it because we will stream for an extended period of time past our three hours during our Metal Gear Solid playthrough. So keep a look on the schedule. I believe it's going to be Tuesday, but we'll double check. But with that, we got to get the heck out of here. Don't forget, tomorrow we will be taking a day off Twitch. We'll be participating in a day off of Twitch to bring an understanding, to bring a voice, to bring support to marginalized streamers all around the globe that are experiencing a lot of hate on this platform. This platform is supposed to be made for fun, for social interactions, and for positivity. And there's a lot of hate and a lot of negativity going around on this platform for people that should not be having that. And so we're going to take a day off of Twitch to listen, to understand, and to support all the streamers around the globe. And we hope you understand. We hope you take a day to listen and think about what's happening here. And hopefully... Twitch will do better and make this a safer spot and a more positive place for everyone of all walks of life to stream on. Then after that, Thursday, we'll be back to kick off our Thursday stream. Kevin, hit the robot arm. We have a fun sponsored stream with Surgeon Simulator 2. Tim and Joey are going to be kicking it, having some fun with all of us. Kevin is going to be controlling this robot arm that you see behind me. He has four of them. We might just use two of them, but he's going to do crazy robot stuff while I play Surgeon Simulator 2 live on stream. It's going to be a crazy stream. It's going to be a ton of fun stream, and that's all you need to know. So keep it locked. Keep it tuned. Thank you for hanging out with us, and we got to go. See you, everybody. Last thing, it won't be Tuesday, but uh, yeah, we'll keep you updated. Won't be Tuesday. See ya.